All due respect, sir, what do you want from me? Hey, asshole, he can't help you. I know what you are, okay? I know what you are and I know what you're not. I'm the best friend you have on the face of this earth and I'm gonna help you understand something, you punk. You're no fucking cop. Live now, we're up. It is uh, me, Andy Katz, uh, serving as the guest host of the Delta Bravo Mission Statement uh, Team Podcast. And uh, I am really excited about uh, uh, having these guest hosting duties. Um, Jimmy's been uh, really busy doing his. Uh, I don't want to say too much, but you can he's say been, it. It's fine. okay. He's been working on his book project, and uh, and uh, as a result, he kind of said, "Hey, like, who should we talk to next?" And uh, uh, the the man that I'm going to introduce is uh, was at the top of the list. I was like, "We need to we need to put some shine on on Fred a little bit because it's like it's, stupid long overdue." Also, absolutely, yeah, and it's been it happens anyway, right? If you're on Facebook and someone's like, "Oh, I got these new patches or these new slaps or this new product," and then if people are doing it right, they're like, "Thank you, Fred." Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to introduce uh, Fred Novoselsky, uh, one of the I guess he's probably one of the original um, Delta Bravo guys. He's been around since the very beginning, as far as I know, and. Um, and uh, he, I, and I want to make sure I get this right. You're Fred. You're in uh, Rhode Island. No, I'm in Southern Mass. Southern Massachusetts. Yeah, All right. Yeah. So I'm, All I'm right. like, uh, I'm splitting the difference between Providence and Boston. Okay, because I know that you know a lot of the the hits that you've done are are Providence and and that yeah. area, right? So yeah, I yeah. guess just in my head, I put you in uh, in Rhode Island, and uh, I'm excited to talk a little bit about um, about how you kind of uh, linked up early on with Danny boy and Delta Bravo. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think we, we met uh, a long time ago at MCA day. Is that right? You and That's I, right. yeah. Yeah. I met you for the first time at um, it was probably the second MCA day, right? 2014. And then um, was it that, was it that early? And then I wanted to say 16 or 17, I did the poster. And I think, I think we chatted more because we knew each other a little better um that's right yeah and then and then you know that whole event's been a little touch and go uh over the years for sure and it's what i love about it and our maybe our collective history is that it's these things that i care so much about and i love so much and it's it has these sort of tendrils and these fingers where you have uh danny boy came in for mca day in 2013 and 2014 and he brought Nako and he brought uh, uh, like his his entourage almost. Oh, yeah, yeah. People, people showed up because he knew they knew he was going to be there. And I was just standing back going, what's going on here? And then I, I kept my ears open and they started talking about going to, hey, let's go to uh, to where Yauk went to uh, high school. And I was like, what? I want to do that. And then they were like, let's go uh, to where they did the hold it now, hit it video. Oh, Dante Ross was there and, and Ricky Powell. And I was just yes, fanning yeah. out. I mean, I was involved with MCA Day and I, I, I couldn't leave. I, want, I, want, I wanted to stay. But when they were leaving to go on these missions, I, I, I just lit up. So and you were there for some of that, right? I was. Yeah, I, it, it's so funny. So uh, talk about like tendrils, like Ricky Powell was there just holding court on the sidewalk, talking to people. And then he would just walk across the street alone and just post up on a stoop and just be by himself. And <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't believe he was there. Right. And, uh, I, I drove down with the family, uh, because I had made the first round of nomad pins and I was like, forget it. Danny's going to be on the East coast. I'm going to deliver him to MCA day. It's like, these are all wins. Right. Yeah. So I show up and you're right. It's, he's got everybody there. Everybody's there. And, yeah. uh, I didn't know, you know, it's at, in the early days, it's like, you don't really know where to fit in. And uh, I, I heard Joe talk about it on this podcast. Like there's the lingo I've been following online since day one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I, I carried over from uh, MySpace to Facebook and then Facebook when, you know, Danny was doing this thing on just his personal page. Yeah. And then when he launched the Delta Bravo page, I got that invite 
and there were guys whose names weren't even on it yet. And I was confused. I'm like, is he pulling everybody in? Am I, am I supposed to be on here? It seemed, it was funny, right? Cause it was so, mm-hmm. it was just so early. And um, yeah, there, there were only admin rights. Nobody could really post yet. And I, I right. was just getting where I fit in. Right. So I just, just doing design work. And I started pitching the coins and the, the pins and the rest is history. Well, when you said Joe, you meant challenger, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, I, and this is, I, I think Joe's a really good example because, and, uh, and Rob Brady and you, and, and I thought everybody knows everybody already. I'm on the outside of this. And the truth was, it was just a bunch of us thinking the same thing. We, we all were Always. like, oh, wow, this is really cool. But when everybody got up to leave and go to these missions, I was like, oh, I'm definitely not in that circle. And um, I, I'm, I, I just was, I was kind of green with envy and, uh, I just wanted to be a part of it. And yeah, we, <laughs> we were there and um, we went to the, uh, what is it? Uh, Jimmy, is it Mr. Softy is the ice cream truck? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm walking around my son's, you know, he's 11 now, but he's a baby at the time. I'll walk around holding him. And I didn't know he was dribbling ice cream all down my shirt. Nice. And I'm just standing there talking to everybody. And Danny just takes off and he comes back five minutes later with a stack of napkins. And he's like cleaning me up. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> like, what is going on yeah what's happening right yeah now? i'm like it, it's just surreal right and then we leave and we go to the hotel and we had you know i was doing stuff with the fam and uh jimmy cash texts me and he's like we're uh we're gonna hit like the projects for like the nas towers he, you were there for that no i was oh. in town. i was in town but i'm at the hotel with my wife and my, okay my, like small toddler son right and i'm like that's queensbridge that's a rough area right there rough. and you know Oh, I know. I've been there. My, but they you know, had, my wife's like, go. It was Steve go. Mona, right? Steve Mona and oh, Tom area, Jacobs. Yeah. So they had the, the sort of the police connection. They could just walk into the building where if we did that, we would be in a lot of trouble, I think. It'd be a lot more questions, right? But I, I got I got the invite, but I just, I, it's one of those things like regrets, right? I just said, ah, I'm with the family. And that's, that's truly my, that's yeah. my Delta Bravo story anyway, right? So I, I, I'm married. I got three kids. I work full time. I, I do a ton of freelance, not just for this club, but just in general. And I just I'm always busy. But when we're out and about, uh, the whole family's involved. And I know, like, Andy, you can relate. I know, uh, you know, Butchie's the same. Joe's the same. Like, it's just sort of like, uh, Jimmy, you're the same, right? Like, you go yeah. out with your daughter. It's of just course. It's every chance I get. It's like, no matter what, I don't care what's happening. I got my daughter. Sorry, can't do it. Well, yeah. the, the thing with me and my family is I'm I'm a little bit of the the nerd dad, and they're like, oh, here he goes, Delta Bravo. And oh, me too. But me no, too. that's exactly say, what I'm saying. They love it. Like they they don't yeah. push back on it at all. Uh, and I've gotten a little bit um, a little bit looser. Like I used to be really uh, dedicated. Like the shots got to be a hundred percent, and I'm taking a hundred shots. I'm a little looser now, right? Yeah. I mean, I could Photoshop you into any photo any right. situation and nobody would question it right and i feel like when the mashes look that way it, they don't work so mm. for for me for my taste i like that they, they can be a little bit more loose bit off. and that's yeah. okay because it it helps having that little juxtaposition helps yeah yeah there's a few not not tooting my own horn but there's a few that i did especially like there's one in my head that i know of you can't even see the mash at all it just looks like a screenshot of something Mm. And it's yeah, like, yeah, but you know, yeah. you, you'll go back and redo yours, just like you want them to be pristine. And I'm like, well, some of them are so bad, and so often I put a giant logo. I have like the the team logo in one corner, and the Brooklyn one in the other, and the name of the movie huge. It's just like, it's just, it just, it, it bothers my eyes now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm like, and if I live close, it's like, oh, it's not like I have to go to Texas. It's like, oh, if that's Coney Island. I'll be there next weekend. I'll just do it real quick, and I'll put it back together, just for my own psychotic nonsense well i was gonna say with my with my family uh every once in a while i'll catch my family enjoying it most of the time they do push back a little bit they're like all right you know go do five but don't do 30 because that's too many but my son right now is down in miami as he's a senior in high school and he had uh, went down to miami for a senior project and I had I had him on the phone earlier and I was like did you go by ocean drive and he's like yeah we're staying right off ocean drive and I was like, did you take him by the Scarface uh, <laughs> of course. Thing, something? And he goes, 
I actually did. <laughs> you know, there you go. So, so I was like, all right. So, and it, of course, you know, he's an, he's eighteen years old. It's it it it's good, right? He's like, a, they, they they shot Scarface in there. Everybody wants to know that. Um, but listen, you kind of glazed over it, Fred, a little bit, and I and I think that this is really important stuff. The, the logo design, um, I actually did a little research uh, just to refresh my memory a little bit, um, but I don't know all of the details. I know that the Delta Bravo logo, as, as I use it, and as most of us use the red round one that says Delta Bravo, um, urban exploration with the, the lightning bolt in the center, it yeah. sort of set the tone for every other logo since then. Um, there's the, the mission statements one that is in Jimmy's background and on the microphone. And I'm looking at my iPad because I, I did some research before we got on the call. Um, am I right that it comes from the Pacific Electric uh, um, logo? And and I don't, I don't know how well this will show up. And I know some of us are listening on audio, but yeah, this is... Right. The, that is that where and, and whose idea was it to, so to, to there's a, appropriate that right i uh i always i always give danny the credit he's he art directs a lot of things right sometimes i'm just helping him out sometimes i'm driving but uh of course for this thing uh it was his and he was working with another designer who was a member yeah. who was no longer a member okay so, um the original original uh which was called the pe uh, Pacific Electric logo was the one with the floating lightning bolt. Yeah. And and then uh, when the lightning bolt got attached to the ring, that's where I came in. I came in right around that era where uh, he was. Is it the little black and white one? No, no. I mean, uh, for ours, for the Delta. Oh, Bravo. I got you. OK, right? so the, the very first Delta Bravo logo was inspired by that logo. Yeah. But the lightning bolts floating in the center space. And then he had come to me. I don't know what was going on with him and that, this other person. But um, he asked if I could work on some things. And we'd already gone back and forth on uh, coins and some other things. And I, I was, I'm 100% in. I'm in, right? Uh, and and it, it just kind of... Opportunity. It. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. I mean, I, I, I did glaze over it. So I was following Danny on MySpace when uh, Lacoca was like popping off, right? But that's... I'm, I'm a huge House of Pain fan. I'm from the Boston area. I know who Slain is, right? Everybody knows Ill Bill. Yeah. Uh, there's this groundswell. We're all hearing about this, this super group, right? But there's like no real, it didn't seem there was like a recording contract, but Lethal's in and Everlast is in. And I, I was like, I was swept up in it. I was following it on MySpace. Uh, but I didn't really understand the marketing, right? I, it's like Danny's work is cool. The logos are cool. The name it missed me if I'm being hundred percent honest, like I haven't dabbled in those uh, dark arts at all. So I'm, I, I didn't understand it. I'm like, it's like Cypress Hill, but it's like hard drugs. What are we doing? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I get it now. I think we all get it now. And um, I, you know, I've done some, some work uh, with him for them uh, at this point, but at the time I, I just didn't get it. And I used my space very strategically in my design career to get freelance clients. So if you were on there and there was like an underground hip hop act that you enjoyed and you, their profile photo was like a GIF animation, chances are I had made that. And wow. um, that was, I, I was running like a small business via MySpace. And when it all went to Facebook, I followed some people over from platform to platform. And Danny was one of the guys I followed over because he, while he was like super approachable, like you said, I never like, he was doing his own design work. So I never linked up to that capacity with him at the time when that's what my focus was. Right. Yeah. That's interesting shit, man. Yeah. 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 And it, it really is. It's, it's fucking crazy. And there's a whole, there's a whole evolution of all of the logos. If you go to the Delta Bravo, uh, uh, Oh, there's oh, 9,000 so of them page. now. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there's so many, there's, you know, there's a bunch that predate me. And, um, and then once I had my hand in it, you know, why would I ever want to stop? Right. It's, oh. this is, I'm in, I'm in. Yeah. So, and, it's, uh, it's, and it seems like, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, I, I mean, it, it's, I think for me, it's kind of obvious. It's like, since, since the regular legitimate Delta Bravo team, red and white logo, once that was accomplished, I think that it's almost, it's the standard that any other logo after that needs that lightning bolt incorporated into it somehow. 
It does. I always try to incorporate that. Yes. That's sort of that's sort of like my personal mission right. is to find yeah, creative see, ways. Like, and, yeah. You know, I just did Salem because Danny was coming to town, Danny Johnson, and I'm like, yeah. how, how am I gonna get, lightning bolt, man? Yeah, yeah. Ride the lightning. How how could I not do that? Right. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, you know, I I'll give myself a little credit though, because who who else is thinking of that, right? It's it's brilliant because it's it's so subtle, but it's yeah. it's there. Well, they're all yeah, they're all beautiful i mean they're all they're all like uh scalable you could put them on a shirt you put them on a billboard uh you put them on a sticker it's it's just a real tribute to your design sense and and yeah. it's a successful design um yeah. do you is there did you go to school for that is that something that you um how did you hone your skills in, in graphic design i did i i have my uh my bachelor's in studio art graphic design and uh i've been in the field since 2003 so you've got 20 years, man. 20 years in, yeah. And, um, you know, another story I was hoping to tell on here was... Tell it! Yeah, when I started talking uh, to Danny via my... Uh, not my... When we switched over to Facebook, he was involved with a... Um, I guess we'd call it like a prepping Facebook page. And uh, he and I were both into like 511 Tactical and having like go bags. And we would chat about that sort of thing. And I was watching this Delta Bravo thing take off as he was starting to build it up. And the company I was, I was creative director for um, a heraldic rights company, which means they just make uh, military um, awards and um, some service badges, everything from like, so on unit crest to, to actual like minted metal pins and crests and badges. And okay. uh, they, they, we purchased a uh, challenge coin. So I was, sort of transitioning in my day to day to, to take on this whole other business. And I thought it'd be fun if he, if we would do a challenge coin and this could be my little hand, I could be more involved with these Delta Bravo guys. And, uh, and I pitched it and it kind of fell flat. And the next thing I know uh, he was working with good art and these silver coins came out and I didn't buy one. Cause I was like, I, I kind of felt like, I floated this idea and then it, 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 and went, to me. <laughs> it, it went to someone else's hand. And, uh, but it was like almost immediately those things came in and went out and then he yeah. came back and he's like, like, can we do these again? Can we do them in color? What are our options? And it just started rolling from there. And we just, we've never stopped. I mean, it's, I, I talked to Danny out of all my friends, well, yeah. clients, like we just, it's <laughs> constant. We're all, it's a constant contact and always ideas and, Look where well, it's, it's funny. I, I I keep thinking as you're talking. Uh, I think Jimmy broke out in a sweat when you mentioned challenge coins because he he yeah. is he has everything that you've you ever got an made. affinity for. Him, no, man. I don't, and that's why I'm sweating. <laughs> but, There's but two I, that but, I still need, and it's <laughs> like, what do I got to do? Well, and that's the thing I wanted to bring up a couple of my favorites because I also want to ask you, Fred, like, what are your favorites? But I, I want to mention, because I, I, it went into my head and I don't want to forget, one of my favorite things, and I gave it to my kids as a Christmas gift, um, was the uh, Astoria uh, uh, nickel, or is it a quarter? A it's quarter. Like that's brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, the, the, I mean, the, the, from, from the Goonies, I, and it and it says my wish on it. I I just think that, that that's one of those things where like I'm like, damn, I wish I thought of that. It, yeah, that's, like, that's, I think that's technically a half dollar, right, or silver dollar. It's it's okay, silver heavy, dollar. Right? But I I shrunk I shrunk the size down because yeah, I, I'm like very cognizant about uh, I don't want to get or yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if it looks like a coin, yeah the size is going to have to be off because I want it to look and feel like one, even though it has a post on the back. I just yep. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to overstep in that area. I just love that. I, yeah. and, and then of course the Goonies doubloon and th th and then you started getting into patina and then there's the, the New York city token, all of that's you, right? You did all of those, right? Well, yeah. So the, the New York city token was, um, that might've been, I, I gotta back it up. It's it's been so long, right? It's I need been... the vintage one. <laughs> so that's so that's and I think I've explained this to you a couple of times. Um, Probably. I don't so, want to hear it though. So good good art did the first coins. We started talking about doing coins with colored enamel. Then it became pins because it was quick turn. I could get them faster. And um we did the MCA day pins, we did the nomad pins, and and once those really like took off and, and people were receptive to them, that's when the other coins came in. And I'm I'm pretty sure it was the shiny version. And uh, that was Butchie. That was Thomas Jacobs. 
uh, driving that the subway token. And yeah. I was the one saying, look, it's going to have this, like this mirror polish. It's going to look like a little brassy. And I don't know if that's the look you want, but that's the look you wanted. Right. So I, I, we did the order and, um, he was super happy with them. And then I went back to the factory unbeknownst to him. And I was like, can you run me? You mean, you got, you got the tools. Can you just run me a handful? And they did, I think they did 12. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. And they shipped them over and I, uh, I hit him up and I was like, look, I had these done. I sent him some photos. I, if, if you wouldn't mind, I'd love to keep one and I'll just send you the rest. Merry Christmas. And, um, he, you know, he was thrilled. And now, now they're like this chaser piece because it was nah. never a real run. It was just well, something that I, I felt there's like, only a dozen dude, serious. I, I, I honestly felt like we had missed the mark if we didn't at least try and he didn't want to do a whole nother full order. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it was just really cool to have. But this is what's so great about it. I, I as someone who collected baseball cards when I was a kid in the '80s and late '70s, um, w- some of the coolest cards were the error cards. And uh, you know, there's error T-shirts where Brooklyn is spelled wrong, and there's I think there's a what is it a it's an MCA day that's with the Brooklyn colors. Is that yeah, right? There's a blue one. There, yeah. There's a handful. We were it was we got to a point where we were running Boston pins MCA nomads we started doing chicago uh we yeah. did the original the pe ones and then uh you know at the factory some of these colors just started getting mixed up and then they they became like these little easter eggs you get a yeah whole bundle a bag of 100 or 200 pins and you'd see it clear as day there's a blue one floating in the red that's bag. amazing yeah and it, i would just kind of set them aside uh, and uh, danny ended up with all of them uh but i think he's gifting them out over the years well, did, did you, uh, I don't know if either of you collected baseball cards, but there was a, I'm an Oriole fan too. So um, Oriole fans and baseball card collectors know about the Billy Ripken fuck face card. Do you know yeah. about this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Holding, on, on the bat. bat yeah. On, on the butt of the bat, it says fuck face. <laughs> and so. I never um, knew that. I wasn't really yeah. into baseball cards like that. Well, That's but the, the cool thing is, is that they, they caught it and then they stopped printing it and they printed another one with a little black box over top of the bad words. And, and I forget which one's worth more, but there's less of one of them so that one of them's worth more. But I love, I love that that's, that's part of what you've created with these, uh, with the pins is that there are these Easter eggs. I like that you put it like that because I'm looking at my shelf now and I have a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the little round ones, the nomad one and all of the different uh, cities and the MCA day one. I was like, I have to get a bunch of those. That was such a, a big part of all of this. And it, it was when everything kind of came together, right? Yeah, and, he was there, you were there. That, and, that one just, I only have the one from MCA day and that one just broke the uh the stem on the back finally stopped oh. it's been on my backpack for all these years and it's it's now just in the top pocket I, yeah one of, a, one of them my, i think fred you gave me one i think it was you it was it was a house of pain one and the back fucking popped off i'm like it fuck. happens i mean those they just yeah. get you know they just get tacked on right yeah so yeah. It's, it's such a small little like electro weld Sometimes yeah. I'm, 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 I'm like on the verge of getting like my fourth fucking Delta Bravo related shadow box, dude. It's ridiculous. You have a better display than I do. I mean, all my stuff is is basically inventory. I have like an old set of metal warehouse drawers and I just have them all inventory. Oh, dude, I have I have to real quick. I have to give a shout out to Dominic DeMeo because I was looking all over the place on Amazon, looking up websites for for specific shadow boxes and so like I needed something very specific and there's a custom made shadow box being made for me specifically for like the 15 fucking switch blades I have now oh, it's didn't, ridiculous didn't Dom, didn't Dom also make the the wall hanging of the logo too like a it's, it's yeah he has like this big metal edge yeah. thing is ridiculous too yeah I don't know who it's, made it's that cool. for him but that shit is nice yeah it's amazing. I, so I, I want to shift gears just a little bit because oh, sure, yeah, I, yeah. I, one of the things, Fred, I, I you touched on this earlier where you were saying that it's a that you uh, your family goes with you and that just knowing you through Facebook and meeting you a few times and talking with you a few times. It's obvious you're a, a family man, a family first guy. And I, I so appreciate that. 
and uh, you're also you're also an artist. You you make your own art. Uh, Vector Sector, if I'm saying that right, is sort of your handle, right? And uh, can you speak a little bit about your your personal artwork that's not Delta Bravo related? Oh, sure. Yeah. So um, Vector Sector was a name I came up with when I was looking to, you know, um, set up my own portfolio page. And um, I, I searched, I was at the office, I was working at this video game accessory company as, as an art director there in Providence. And uh, it's called Gamer Graphics. And it was super fun place, strategic partnership with Hasbro, 50 Cent owned uh, 15% of the company. It was we had a board of investors. It was, it was a real like rock star roller coaster ride. Uh, but while I was there, it was just, you know, this takes us back to MySpace, right? I was building my own work and I was trying to figure out a way to set up my own page where I could just have a portfolio of wasn't the work that was mine that I wasn't producing uh, for my career, right? Because right. it's weird. It's art, art's your hobby, then it becomes your career, and then you've lost your hobby. And I, yeah, and I've just never really wanted to let it go. And I started uh, working on these little vector illustrations of these robots. And then I started playing with, um, you know, depth of field and color theory and just just all principles and all the things that I really carry to this day for my personal work. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it was really like rudimentary at the time. It was I was trying to, to lead the viewer into these spaces just just using shape and color. Mm-hmm. and um it, it just kind of grew I, I gave myself a challenge like i'm going to do one every month and i'm going to put it on the website and that'll be the draw you can come and you can see the new piece i'm working on but also i have my graphic design portfolio there but i could all every month i could just post hey there's a new piece up and it, it just might be an invitation to come visit the website so that, that was in the early days that's how i wanted to do it and then as my career progressed and it moved along i kept doing this in the background and when i worked at that heraldic company the owner was um a patron member of the providence art club which is the second oldest art club in the in the country oh, wow. and uh he introduced me took me to a couple events there introduced me to his folks and he said you should really you should apply to be a exhibiting member and that took a calendar year and a jury of 12 to figure out if i was good enough to be an exhibiting member there and um I made it in. I made it in. And for s- about six years, I was showing work there. And that's it, it's a real it's not a country club, but it's that sort of vibe. Right. You have to spend a certain amount on um, entertainment dinners at the bar. You have to bring in friends and relatives and they do Mother's Day brunches. But they there's a constant revolving schedule of shows. And uh, I made myself available to as, as, as many as I could. and. I had a young baby at home. I'm working full time. It was really hard to keep up on that work, but having that deadline gnawing at me all the time, it, it just, it drove me for all those years to just oh. build these collections. And that's, that's where the bulk of my work really, really built up. Uh, and then um, I stepped away from it. Uh, work was transitioning. I didn't really have the availability to the club and uh I just took a step back and then I took a step back from my work too. And it's been in the last maybe three years, I've gotten really gotten back to it. And I feel like it's, it's going in a more personal direction now, but still from the same place. If that, if that makes any sense. Makes complete sense. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes sense to me too. I mean, someone who, and this is where I was kind of going with that question. um, And why I brought your family up, because I think as someone who, and I, if I can pay myself the compliment of relating to you as an artist, I, uh, I'm an art teacher and I'm an artist too. And I love the whole Delta Bravo thing. And I love my family. And so it's, it's a, it's a balance. Right. And I was just going to ask you, like, how do you strike that balance? Is there any secret to it? I mean, it sounds like you're, you just have a good head on your shoulders and you know when to pull back on certain things. Yeah. It's a, uh it's, it's family first and last, right? Always. So it's, that's, that's just what it is. I I just, I put, I put them ahead of everything, but they're also, they're in it with me. So if if we're going to a new city, a new town, if we're getting on a plane, I'm doing my research 
they know I'm doing my research. They're asking me, you, you know, do you want to, you want to work that in on Monday, on Wednesday? When, when are we doing that? They know it's going to be part of the trip wherever we go, that that's going to be part of the day. Sure. Yeah. Which is awesome. I mean, yeah. you enjoy yeah, so, it. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's, that, that's cool. But and I, that's, what, yeah, that leads us to, I guess, you're not just a logo guy and you're not just a designer and you're not just a, a dad and a husband, but you're also someone who goes out and hits spots, right? So do you have, do you have a favorite or a first or some experience that you want to speak to about, uh, I don't know, about going out, traveling and finding locations? I mean... They're, for me, they're all, I don't have a favorite. I'm going to be honest with you. I, my bucket list is I want to get out to Astoria. If, if we could pull those threads back together. Mm -hmm. um, the number of people that have taken that coin out there and already done the thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I'm happy enough to see it. Yeah. Right. I mean, when, when, um, when, when Tom from main street, I think he was the first one I saw do it. That's awesome. Uh, I was, I was like literally overjoyed. I'm like, I cannot believe it already worked. Right. Because that was the goal Yeah, was to, was to make the artifact and then get it there. And then, um, well, you know, here and, we have go. The fucking, yeah. and then have them have it line up. It's nuts. Yeah. It's know, awesome. All I had to really go on was, uh, some, some, some crude, screen grabs off the internet from movie props and you know uh, we all do it i was taking stills from the film and i was just taking them into photoshop and warping them trying to find the perfect angle where it looked like it was head on and that's that's where i, I created the actual line drawings for those yeah. doubloons that's so to answer that question to circle all the way back that's my favorite coin because um you know Dan, danny is a designer and i i can't say it enough like He's an art director in his own right. Sure. I, I, I take his lead on a lot of things and uh, working with him for over a decade now. Right. I really do look at him like a mentor uh, for design, but I do have my own taste and my own wants. And that was that was high on my list. And he was he, he was really making coins through the company I worked for. And I was. I'm designing coins for general public anyway, right? So we have people coming in, not just from the military, but off the street who want coins. I just introduced them to the company. So it was just fun. I got to work on those things, but I wanted to make my own. So yeah. I, I did the Goonies doubloon, and then I approached him on the side and I'm like, look, could we just co-brand this thing? Could we just flip it on the backside and make it, you know, part of the team? And he, he was all in and they sold out in a Go. blink. And then we did a second run. Those sold out, and then the third one came pretty recently. Yeah, Grow Man Goonies one. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing, right? I've always loved that moniker, the Grow Man. That's that's my Goonies are my outsiders, right? I'm I'm 43. Right. So, uh, you guys, the, the guys in their 50s, it's like you're the outsiders generation. I'm, I'm 47. Like, settle down. I'm not 50. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, there's I'm, a lot of guys. I'm over 50. <laughs> yeah, we're there, there's like a good 10 year swing for for a lot of the core guys. Yeah. And I feel like there's a cutoff where those films were in the theaters like roughly the same time. Sure. And it's like if you were a kid, you saw the Goonies, and if you were a teenager, you saw the Outsiders. Yeah. And uh, you know, we've all seen them both at, at this point. But um, I grew up on the Goonies. It's, it's my it's my absolute favorite. So yeah. I'll, I'll date myself a little bit. And, and this kind of goes to, to your, uh, the doubloon idea and having to do the stills and, and figure out how it looks. So long time ago, now, uh, uh, there's a movie, but it's uh, Terry Gilliam. It's uh, it, a lot of the members of Monty Python were in it. And there's this, there's this old, it's a, Sort of a time travel movie where they go through these these holes and they What's can the arrive. Movie? Time Bandits. Okay, I've never seen it. I've heard of it. All right, yeah, well, same. I I loved it. I loved it as a kid. And when the internet started happening and eBay started happening, um, this this guy he called himself. I think it was in Indie Magnoli, and he would make replica props for from movies. Uh, he made like the staff of Roth. Um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and he 
uh and actually fred i could totally see you doing this too uh you know like we've talked the- about it i'm not gonna lie we've talked that's, about that's that. awesome yeah so this guy so so he made the time bandits map which is probably like um i don't know 18 by 24 and he did it all digitally and you could order it two different ways and this is this reminded me of the of the coins that you've made uh you could order it just flat and clean or he would dust it up for you and and make it look old and fold it the same way it was folded in the movie. Awesome. And I actually ordered the clean one and I probably shouldn't have, um, but I framed it when I got it. But I remember sending him a, a note uh, uh, and I was like, should I feel like weird or, or or like too nerdy that I'm so excited to get this this uh, this map in the mail? And he goes, he's like, dude, you're talking to somebody who made the map. Yeah. Like, you're you're good you know like it's okay but it there's there's this thing that you're you've zeroed in on like the there, these things that we love the, the, it's a prop but it's also bigger than the prop it's the the message and the location and when it all comes together so i never knew that you were you were getting uh these these sort of uh extra thrills from watching people go to Astoria and and hold it up to the rocks and I think I think like Josh Azuna Cooper was just there just there um, yeah yeah it hasn't stopped right yeah it's just I I love it because I've never I've been out to the west coast a handful of times but never never there and um uh, I've never been to LA so when I see these people are they're hitting these spots like I've been all over New York and all over the east coast like Jimmy has but it's some of these places are fictional to me. So going to Astoria to go to the Goonies house or, or that or that ridge where you can see the rocks from a distance. I mean, that's yeah. that's like that's I don't know. I just love it. So you've connected yourself to that with these coins. And and uh, yeah, like I like I said, the one the, the little Astoria uh, nickel or half dollar. It's got to be one of my favorites because I gave it to my kids. They love that movie. Yeah, and that, they, that was that was really touching when I saw you with that whole. It was it was almost like a, a book or a box, right? You yeah, had I took cover. the yeah. I took the thing off and I put the post into a sketchbook cover. Like yeah. I pressed it in, and then so the, it looked like a sketchbook, and it looked custom made because the coin was on the, on the cover. That's I'm glad you saw that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. I um that that was one of the so. Uh, I got away from making coins in my career and I did, I did a a stint over about three years doing contracts with Hasbro. And I was really happy with the work I was doing, uh, being involved with uh, toys, but I was away from manufacturing. And um, it was, it was in those years that I I reached out to a factory and uh, just started making pins and coins again on my own, just Just on my own, I, I figured I've I've done it before. It's been I've been away from it for a few years. I really miss it, and that that one, um, you know, Martin Sheen. <laughs> that was right. Martin Sheen. Yeah, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> that was one of the first ones I did uh, on my own. That one, and um, I think some of the House of Pain coins, and then uh, the Lightning Bolt. Wow. Oh, yeah, and I have all of that stuff. I also, I mean, I don't know if anybody would be interested, but I I uh, worked with you to make one of my one of my drawings into a an enamel pin that's right yeah um, my, that's right my uh my little q-tip uh jimmy you might even have that one too i, I do have I, I have your stuff man yeah you have the sticker. stickers and yeah, yeah but, but fred and i turned that sticker into a pin so i have the little uh q-tip uh running with his microphone it's the check the rhyme lyrics yeah, the one with the, the, with, the pine, with the pineapple now ladies in his pocket you got it that's i it. know it's yeah. awesome. And Fred That's was all- like little Easter eggs. Like if you know, you know. It's like such, right. a, such a, it's a one little line in the middle of this whole, so yeah, I love that little shit, man. The and that's the connection to the Beastie crazy. Boys. Yeah. 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 So I, I, um, I, Fred was so, um, but he, he took a chance on me and I took a chance on him because he's like, hey, you want to try this? I had never gone into that arena at all. And I remember you were concerned because there was a cord on the microphone that yeah. wasn't really working because of the how it gets die cut. It would be too delicate. So he's like, ah, oh, I don't know. Is it, Are you okay with this? I'm like, yeah, man, it looks amazing. I, I'm, I, it's so cool to see these things come to fruition. It's not just a lot of talk. We actually make these things happen. So there's something really magical about that, too. So I really appreciated that whole 
collaboration. And that, I think as an artist, I, I love the idea of actually collaborating with another artist. It's, it's oh, rare. Same. Yeah, it is rare because, uh, you know, egos are abound, right? Everybody wants to be in control and for uh, sure. True collaboration is about the best idea, right? I talk about that at work all the time. Now it's not about my idea. It's about the best idea. That's right. And, and that's if that's right. what you want, if that's what you want out of any project, then that's what you have to be open to. Right. Yeah. You don't have to be in the driver's seat. Just contribute and, and recognize the best idea when you see it. Go that way. Yeah. Huh. So you're talking about toys and coins. Yeah. The the one thing I didn't get, and I'm sure Jimmy got it, it was recent. You made the uh, leprechaun, right? That was you. Yeah, the, the, the fighting Irish. Uh, I, I got that shit. Show. I, I think I was too. I think I was the first one to get one. I was like waiting, and it just so happened that I went on, and and it, it that came up, and Danny Boy had posted it, and it just said just now, like he had just posted. It. As soon as I went on, I went boop boop boop. I was like, ooh, two fifty, fuck it, bang, got it, and that's it. And it was gone like forty five seconds later. It was done. That was a hard secret to keep. That was that was a long time coming, that yeah. project. And you know, Jimmy, you pressed me. You pressed me on occasion. What what's next? Are we working on anything? <laughs> well, I, I, but, I, but you know what? To your credit, though, you didn't sure. fucking crack, man. You didn't fall under the question at all. It was like, like got, we got we got something and... small coming up, and then there's something really big. Something, you know, yeah, something like whatever, and then something big. Like that's all he would tell me. I'm like, all right, you, the anticipation's killing me because everyone already knows. Like I'm like an idiot when it comes to going getting all of this shit. That that toy is is um, I I still have in the box. I haven't figured out where. Me to too. Play. Me too. I don't I don't want the kids to knock it over. I don't want someone to slam a door in a uh -huh. shelf. I'm really gonna have to find a shadow box where it's contained and it can't fall too far. Yeah, yeah. Same here. Yeah, tip. Maybe get some studio tack and have it, you know, under the feet or something because that that literally took over a year to to build. I brought in a CAD guy, we tweaked it, tweaked it, tweaked it. We got with the factory. We we got a sample in. There was a sample that was lost in the mail. Wow. I, mean, the, I I don't want to I don't want to go on and on about it, but it was there were a lot of things coming. that kind of took a wrong turn. And we just kept pressing forward with it. And um, I'm really happy with them. And they're hefty. I don't know if you've held one yet. Yeah, they're no, they're hefty. fucking heavy. They're, it's, those things are legit. It's solid as fuck. It's, like, it's, it's a real, like a real plastic. Idea. It's not. It's, that thing has weight to it. Yeah, I, I had done my own. Uh, if you look at my personal work, there's a little robot character uh, that I call VS1 uh, for Vector Sector. He shows up in a lot of my pieces. And I had, I had worked with a CAD person and um, I did 3D prints and I had them turned into molds and I had resin uh, mm -hmm. casts done and I did them in a whole bunch of different colors and I did a gallery show of just my own toy. So I have a bunch of those. Wow, and that's I, awesome. I started real early with 3D printing. We did a small one. I did one a little larger and I had it uh, electro gold plated. I found a place in the old jewelry district in Providence that could actually electro plate on the 3D printed resin um wow. it, i think it was kind of foolish money at the time too but i wasn't even a dad yet so i i let it fly and yeah. i just had this one gold robot uh and then i made these bigger ones and um that bugs in me i mean i collected kid robot uh figures for a long time you know dunnies and kozik mm -hmm. figures yeah yeah um yeah it's i just i love i love all that stuff and then that yeah. the crossover and having access to someone like danny and and working together on a project right. like, like that is is so fun. I mean, he, yeah. he he came to me with the idea to do the mashup of those two logos. Really? Yeah. And I so I just illustrated it. And um, sometimes to go back and forth, but that was one of those nailed it. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, that was one of those things that once that design came out, next thing you know, it was every single product of that thing. It was like it was I could yeah, as soon as it was stickers, done, coins, shirts, toy. It's like, God damn, all right. It was definitely, <laughs> he definitely did it for a t-shirt and then we made patches and then he said, can we do coins? And we did the coins. Yeah. And then he said, this thing has to be a toy. And, um, you know, it, he'll tell you, sometimes he comes to me with an idea and I don't get to it. I try to get to all of them. The man's got a lot of ideas. 
And yeah. uh, that was, that was one, as soon as he said it, I was, I was on the hunt. How do I make this happen? Cause I want to, I want to make this happen. And, uh, um, it super fun process, a lot of learning curves. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but you hit it out of the fucking park, man. It was great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Perfect. Team effort for sure. I mean, I, I wouldn't even be working on that if not for him. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I've saved, I've saved thousands of dollars. Um, not being fast enough to buy these things uh, because oh, usually God, I'll, get, I'll, I'll get out of work and I'll look at the the thread on Facebook and it's like it's going live. You better scoop it up or buy or cry or whatever it is. And it's like that was three hours ago. And then you look down and it says they're all gone. And I, I'm all just gone. at work. I'm like, oh well. That's my that's that's my privilege is when you know when you're working on the things you get one. You kind of end up with like, so many of them as you should they pass right through my house and then I, I ship them off and yeah. 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 I, I, I'm That's missing awesome. two core as far as like, I know I have, I have a, a, an extensive collection, but I'm missing two coins. And as far as like the shirts and the hats like that, like I came in a little bit later in the game. Like my first hit was like March of like 2016. You know what I mean? So, so I mean, there was there was shit going on before that, a lot of shirts and hats and stuff. So as far as that stuff, like that that I don't get all you know compulsive when it comes to like shirts and shit. But like when it comes to coins and all the stickers and all that stuff, then yeah, I, I like I I want to get everything. So there's only two coins though, which is the the vintage um, token and the Johnny Cade. I don't I don't even have the Johnny Cade. And That's uh, insane. I can promise you. <laughs> The first batch of those that came in, they were so, they were brassy. They were, they were just really uh, underwhelming. The, the gold wasn't yellow enough. They just looked really, really light and brassy. And we rejected them. And uh, I don't know where those are. There was an, like a full order that just got scrapped. And I don't know what happened to them. I don't even have one of those. Uh, and then this, the new order came in. They were perfect. They went out. I, How I just many made? Just, Not a lot. Not a lot, no. I mean, fifty would be the minimum, but I would. I I think we did a hundred, but I'm not. I'm not positive. I just, Jimmy. I feel like I've said this to you, but you this probably is, have. But there's so many iterations of, of uh, of this of of the team, right? There's just been there's been group after group, and certain guys stick around, certain guys fall by the wayside, and some of those earlier guys that uh that have just you know fell out of favor they have a lot of this old stuff and they, it probably doesn't mean as much to them as it would to you. Yeah. I just don't know how to link you up with those guys. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to start digging and start harassing people like, Hey man. <laughs> I did. But I mean, honestly, it's I'm not it's, above doing that, but I just feel weird doing it. <laughs> it's, I don't think everybody left with bad blood is what I'm saying. I think, right. I think a lot of people just, they don't, you know, they don't hold the passion forever. They just move on with their lives or whatever. I'm, I'm sure there's a handful of guys that just, did it for a while and appreciated the novelty of this and, and just moved on. Maybe yeah. they just, maybe they'd part with it. That's all I'm saying. Sure. I get it. I get it. And it's it's like it's, 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 there's so many different things about this whole thing that I just love to do. I mean, it's just, it's, I, I feel like I say this ad nauseum. It's, it's just, it's the reason to get out of the damn house. And, and, and like, like you're a Goonies guy. And so, like, your bucket list, like, the feeling that you would get when you're standing up there holding up the doubloon that you created must be ridiculous, you know, when you once you eventually get there. It's like this surreal moment that basically channels back to your childhood. It's like this – it's all nostalgia, back to a simpler time, good memories as a kid. And that's so much of it for me, man. Like, there's so much. Like, for instance, like, on my way back, I drove I, – I flew down to Florida on Flash Friday – and I just I drove a new car back up. I picked up a car down there. I wish I had more time, but of course I worked in hitting a few spots on my way up, like not going too far off course because I was on a time schedule. And I'm looking and all of a sudden it's like, oh, Beaufort, South Carolina. And there's a movie called The Great Santini, which is a lot of people never even heard of it. It's with Robert Duvall. And he's a, he's a wartime, like a fighter pilot but it's during peacetime and he's crazy and, and he, he messes with his family and all this stuff. So I just looked up there were like movies filmed in South Carolina on our drive up. And it was like, Oh, the great time. Like really? So I looked at it. It happened to be like 17 miles away on our way. I'm like, this is awesome. 
So like I never in a million years thought that I remember watching that movie when I was when I was a little kid. It came out in 79 with my biological father. And that's how I knew that movie. So being there and taking those shots, I'm like, I have that in my head as me being like maybe like seven years old watching this movie and picturing all that while I'm half trespassing on this amazingly beautiful historic house in Beaufort, South Carolina, which is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to in the country. Jimmy, Unbe- the, the, uh, the, you just posted um, the Alien Warnos ones. Those freaked me out, man. That, that, bar, was, that was also, I, I think we were driving and I don't remember, it was either me or Nikki and I'm just like, I, I, something about Eileen Warnos came up and, and it was like, yeah, I, shit, well, that was in Florida. And then I looked it up, I looked up, that and then it, you know how you go down. Next thing you know, it's like the monster, you know, monster from two thousand and three, the movie with Charlie Theron. And I was like, oh yeah, well you can actually go to this bar, the Last Resort Bar, and it's right outside of Jacksonville. I had a spot that I picked out for Jacksonville, which is a stupid GI Jane training scene. Yeah, but, but it, it was like it worked. It, was like, it worked. <laughs> so it was like seven miles away, and I'm like, you could actually go there. And this was really where. She hung out. This was yeah. really the place where they filmed some parts of that movie. And I'm walking in there, and there was nobody in there. The door was wide open. I'm like, hello, hello, like, like, what's going on? And then I hear people in the back, like out in the backyard, there's a whole big other bar. And there's three people back there that looked like they were three sheets to the wind already. And I walk back in there and I have my phone. I'm like, hey, what's up? Being, you know, me. How you doing? Blah, blah. And they're looking at me like I'm crazy. Big time New York accent. I'm in like some weird town in Florida. I'm like, I have a question. You probably get this all the time. Where was this filmed inside? And then this girl who looked like she's made out of leather. She was just like, oh, sure, honey, I'll show you. I do the tours around here. I'm like, what the oh, fuck is huh? happening? So she yeah. gave me like this whole tour. And th- this is the pool table that Eileen used to play pool on. And this is where she used to sit. And there's people wrote on Sharpie markers on the edge of the bar. Rest in peace, Eileen. Like, there's a whole shrine there. That, that was, shrine, like, flipped me out a little bit. I'm I was like, like, what? Because the whole weird. area is beautiful. And I'm in this weird. little bar that looks like it yeah. belongs in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> yeah, like, this doesn't even belong here. But th- those are the moments where it's like, that wasn't even intended. That was like a bonus hit that wasn't even on my list. You know, as if we're driving. So I'm just like looking up spots. So th- things like that, like I never thought I would be in hundreds of places that I've hit. I never thought I'd be standing there. No, I, I, go ahead. Sorry, Fred. Uh, I was just going to say, I feel like in the in the earlier days for me, I touched on this earlier, wanting wanting to like get the perfect shot perfect lineup perfect mash it it was it was super important it seemed like that was the game and i feel like i enjoy the hunt more now like it's just it's more about like i don't have anything to prove i'm not trying to get in with these guys this isn't like something i'm trying to latch on to uh you know I, i feel like we're all established with each other and now for me i just enjoy the whole process more me too man it's it's funny even as a designer um you know 20 years in i don't do my mashes in photoshop i do all of them on my phone really yeah all of them 100 percent. like i just you have an iphone i have an iphone and uh i don't have a droid i i downloaded a couple different apps that people told me about i don't know how to use them oh i have i have a bunch of like photo editing apps that i use and um snapseed it i use to correct color and in in um crop and there's there's a, a hundred fools in that app and then i just use a simple app called juxtaposer and that just allows you to to just build it literally lets you make layers the way you wouldn't in photoshop but it's it's super rudimentary it tells yeah, you i the use uh, an image and uh, I use the procreate i use this the procreate app and it's um i use that for everything but i i use super easy for uh for mash and pictures i use a ridiculously old version of photoshop elements dude i can't imagine the time you are wasting when i hear you say i've heard you say this and the the way that that this the the speed that that thing must run at i don't it's have fast. I don't i'm like blip, 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 blip. I'm, i i i could miss like like my last road trip i was i was doing like 40 mashes a night once i once i did that whole last road trip last year 
40 matches a night. I'm banging them all out. Bong, bong, bong. Who is it? So there's one of us. It might be Joe Schellinger. I forget. Somebody uses PowerPoint. Yeah, that's Joe. Yeah, he yeah. Said that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah He's like, yo, you might yell at me. Shout out to Joe. Shout out to Joe. <laughs> yeah, big shout out to Joe. Yeah. The, yeah, the Liberty funny, Bell though. graphic I did for Joe is one of my favorites. Which, Which one? one? The Liberty Bell, where it's just the, oh, yeah. the lightning bolts upside down for the crack. Yes. Uh, that's one of, I mean, it just seems like a no-brainer again, but uh, I, I haven't seen anybody else do it, so yeah. I talked about it. Fa- one of my favorites that, that Rob never sent me a sticker, I need one, are those Vegas ones. Oh, the shout out. Wheel? Oh, the roulette wheel? Yeah. yeah. Shout out Rob Brady. I did those for him. No doubt. Brilliant. And, um, Tonight, I walked in the door. I, I was rushing home, uh, stopped by my son's soccer practice, said, hey, what's up? I got to get home. I got to do this thing. And I walk in the door. I have a package from Rob. I haven't even texted him yet. And a bottle of whiskey and a bunch of uh, metallic uh, Sin City in Las Vegas with the roulette wheel. They're metallic stickers. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like Joe, hey, Joe and, um, and Rob – Rob Brady and Joe Schellinger, they have that sort of art director piece too. Like they have a, a mind for uh, uh, throwing out an idea and making it happen. I, I got really lucky. Um, both of those guys welcomed me um, uh, earlier this year. I went to uh, Philly for the day and Joe Schellinger rolled out the red carpet and I parked my car at a Home Depot and he picked me up. And we, he just took me like all the Rocky spots and boys to men and, and, and Cinderella. It was awesome. Yeah, man. And Bruce Springsteen, the Philadelphia video. It was just a great day. It was awesome. And at one point he looks over at me. Uh, I was, it was later in the day. We'd been together all day long. And I'm like, isn't this weird? Like, we don't really know each other. You know, we, we we're connected through like this thing. And he yeah. goes, yeah, get the hell out of my car. How are you? You know, it was just like this moment. It was just like, I don't even know who you are, but it, but it was so cool. The same thing happened um, with Rob. I went to New York back in uh, in February, and and uh, Rob met me down um, on St. Mark's Place, and we uh, we hit a whole bunch of spots. And he's like, "Hey, man, I got off the bus, and I want to take you somewhere." So he's he didn't even tell me where we were going, and we started walking. We're walking. We're he's like, "It's just up here," and we turn and we're at the photo the photographiska. Uh, a photo show it's a all hip-hop and it was just this amazing uh photo show and um we just had the best day like we just we saw so much and then we we went from the show we saw this really great picture of the roots in new york and he's like i used to work right next to that building i'll take you there and so right after the show we walked down and uh we we mashed up a spot that next to where he used to work like this is just perfect i love when that happens i mean there's this this so it speaks to what you're talking about fred about the um the process and uh the relationships and the connections and the the meals that you end up having with people i think danny o'connor said this a lot about um yeah it's cool to get the mash and everything but what's happening you know who are you meeting i mean we're all talking right now and we know each other through this thing and it's it's substantive that it's a substantial connection that i feel really good about there's a lot of ease here, right? I've, I, I've known, I mean, not, not you two in particular, but I mean, as a collective over a decade with, with the same folks, you know, and yeah, people get welcome into the fold when they're doing it right. And it's just, it's, it's super cool. I mean, Jimmy was just in town and uh, I'm coming back in two weeks. Was it two weeks? Yeah. Yeah. We, we all met up and I, we, uh, where, where did we have pizza? Uh, something with an E. Ernesto's. So we Ernesto's. Had, we were we were supposed to go uh, to the South End, right? And uh, there was a Bruins game, and um, I was fighting hard. I didn't want to. Regina's is the spot, but I didn't want to fight and, and and pay the uh, fifty dollars to park to wait in a three hour line to have a slice I've had a thousand times. Right. Uh, we'll do it another time. But uh, I, I came I came out of the parking garage, and here comes Tim True, and. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, we just, it's, it's right. immediate, but Tim and I only know each other through, through this also, but yeah. we've been going to concerts together for 10 years and we see each other maybe once a year, maybe at best, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. you know, like you, you came walking in, Danny's there, uh, Joe Kelly, and it's all, it's all hugs and lunch. Yeah. Uh, it's like, hugs and let's just eat. Let's just yeah. bullshit. And it was fucking cool as shit. It's like, dude, I gotta give the biggest shout out to Joe Kelly because 
I, I would go back and forth with him a little bit on the group or, you know, private messenger about things. He was like, all right, let me know when you get in. He came, like, I, I, I kept my car in the garage at the hotel. He came, he's like, what time is early for you? I'm like, I don't care what time is early for you. He's like, is seven o'clock too early? I'm like, no, as long as we get coffee, I don't care. He's like, coffee is a must. He came to the hotel. Danny Johnson met me at the hotel. He picked me, Nikki, and Danny up. And next thing you know, it was him just all day long. I hit like 30 spots before we even went to go get lunch. And he was having more fun, I think, showing us around. And it was a history lesson, too. It was like yeah. this and this and this. And there's so many things I had no idea about. It was just super interesting. And, like, I had never met Joe. I'd never seen him before in person in my life. God, Next thing you know, I'm riding shotgun, and we spent the whole day together. Well, I tried to offer him gas money. He told me to go fuck myself. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what the fuck? Come on, man. You know? It's, it's just stuff like that. And I think it's, like, the same with Joe Schellinger. You know, a while back, he just hit me up. He, he hit me up and he was just like, you think we can go all city in a day? I went, Amazing. sure. I picked him up in the city. I was like, all right, well, we just got to go. I know the route to go in order to make it happen so we could all meet up at Yow Park for the, the birthday celebration of MCA Day. And we, we hit all five boroughs, like, no problem. And we wound up in Brooklyn at that, no problem. And I I didn't, I, I'm actually, I met Joe in person once at the All City Comic Con in Virginia, in uh, Gettysburg, Virginia, somewhere. But it was like kind of brief, you know what I mean? But all day long, get in the car, let's fucking go. And places like you're eating, they're closed now, but I'm sure that Joe, actually he hit me up when, the, when they closed. Joe was like in his glory that he was sitting in Lenny's Pizza where they filmed Saturday Night Live, Saturday Night Fever, eating a slice of pizza. You know, that was like something huge for him. I've had that pizza 9,000 times. It's no big deal for me, but for him, that's like he was saying. It's like a fairy tale place. We were driving down the Bell Parkway. He looks over and he's like, "Is that the cyclone? Is is that is that is that the Wonder Wheel in Coney Island?" I'm like, "Yeah, dude." He's like, "That's like the Emerald City, like Wizard of Oz shit. Like that doesn't that's not even real to me." I'm like, "Yeah, dude, that's just Coney Island." So I know that's a bucket list spot for him, but like things like that, like I got a kick out of his joy of just seeing the Wonder Wheel. You know, like that's just a cool thing. You know, just like me, I go, I go around, I, I would never run up them, but first time I went to Philly and I saw the Rocky stuff, so I'm like, this is fucking dope. Of course, yeah. You know, like, this is awesome, you yeah. know, there's people well, Joe, working out and stuff, but it, this is great. Joe has said there's going to be an all-city 2.0, and I invited myself. Uh, so let's here. go. Actually, no, I, only, I only have Manhattan and Brooklyn done. I've I've tried, uh, Where where's the um, the globe out? Is that Queens? Yeah, yeah, it's the Uni Spirit. I, yep, flushing. Yeah, head. I I was there uh, right as we lost the sun, and there was like some summer jam with all the little rappers, and it was just socked oh, in. Oh, little rappers. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we were just I was of course I was with the family, and uh, we we had gone to Legoland, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, let's just let's just do the city on the way home. We did the city, and you know, I went to like Union Square Park and we we did a bunch of spots that I wanted to do. We did the uh, sea glass carousel that my wife wanted to do. We was, we we're just having a day and I finally made it all the way over there into Queens and we, it just, I just lost the sun. It just, yeah. there's just no way. And I'm not going to drag the kids out and walk. Yeah, half it's, half it's, that you have to, it depends on the time of the day and you have to be out and about early. Sunday is probably the best day to do it. And you got to be out early. You got to go from, depending on where you want to end up, you got to go to the furthest place first, which would be up in the Bronx. But, but it's the, the thing that me and Joe were tossing around was, was all city 2.0 plus one. All right. Long That's what it is because we got to throw Long Island into the mix. All right. Even though it's not a borough, it's still a different section. And there's one spot I could have got it several times. But I didn't because I know that Joe wants to go there and do it. And it's a picture of of um, Chuck D graduating from, from Delphi. Yeah. Delphi out in Long Island. And yeah. I have it. It's been in my phone for three years plus now. I could have got it, but I won't do that to Joe. I won't do that. Now, Andy, did you did you come up like a, a giant PE fan? I mean, how how do we not <laughs> how do we not segue into that? Right. Yeah, like, really. 
I don't, you're, I don't you're in like Ford's in his book. I mean, I don't, I, I, yeah. it's that, that is, uh, I don't, I can't believe it myself. It's yeah. It's amazing. I, I, whenever I talk about it, I feel like I'm tooting my own horn, but no, since you, no, since you asked, yeah, it is what it is, I mean, I, I honestly, it's, it's like a crazy dream come true. I, I, I value my connection with Chuck uh, more than, than most people because he's one of the most generous people I've ever met. I, I, uh, I met him as a fan and um, I met him through Twitter when they were coming around in uh, 2013. I think it was, yeah, 2013. It was the hip hop gods tour. And I was new to Twitter at the time. And I, I kept, uh, I had, I was, I was starting to do portraits and bringing them to shows to live shows and then using my portraits to meet the artists that were performing and I, I had done this charcoal drawing of Chuck, and he had always been a hero of mine. And I had actually made it a mission uh, to meet him someday. I, I, I saw him and Cool J induct the Beastie Boys into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland uh, the year before. And you were there. Uh, I was there. Yeah, we went. We drove. We drove wow. out. It was awesome. And I was. It was like it. I, I we, had the, we had like the worst seats in the whole place, but it was great because we were center. You were there. Yeah, it was there. It was amazing. And then I uh, we heard at, at that point we thought the Beastie Boys are going to perform. So it was it was that night where we all realized something was really wrong because Yauk wasn't there. We actually bumped into Ad Rock and Mike D on the street because we ate at the same restaurant they did beforehand. Um, and and we went and it was <clears throat> Chuck D and LL Cool J came out to induct them. And I was like, this is unreal. Like, I'm under the same roof as all these people that I just love. Like, I love classic hip hop. I love those guys, Beastie Boys, Run DMC, Public Enemy, LL Cool J. That's, that's just like my, my wheelhouse, right? And I went to my friend Tom lives in, um, in Cleveland, so he let us stay with him. And I said to him in his kitchen that night, I was like, I really want to meet Chuck D someday. I just, I, I really admire him. I mean, he's brought so much to the forefront. Uh, in the way that I think, and it's not just rap, it's, it's important. And it's, uh, sociopolitical. It's, it's something that really makes you think. And, uh, I made it a mission to meet him, but I didn't think it was going to necessarily come true, uh, so quickly. And I went to, I made this piece of art. I posted it on Twitter. Didn't know anything about Twitter at the time. And I kept like tagging his name and I would do lyrics. And then I would say, you know, I'm going to the show at the nine 30 club, on this date, you know, come out and see Public Enemy. And then one night I'm sitting there watching TV and my phone vibrates and it's it says, uh, hey, bro, DM me. And I, I, I showed my wife, I was like, I, I, this is how clueless I was. I'm like, what does DM mean? And she's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, I think it means direct message. And then I, I end up, I was like, oh, shit, like he's going to, it's like a cease and desist. Like he's like, stop using my lyrics or stop posting my picture. I just didn't know. I was very naive. So I wrote him back. I was like, hey, like, uh, what can I do for you? And he's like, <laughs> you've been posting all these lyrics and you've been posting all this, that art. Is that art yours? And I said, yeah, it's mine. He goes, I want you to be a guest at the show. And uh, there's something I want to there's something I want to talk to you about when you're there. And I was like, what? Like, I took the day off of work. And I was like, well, hell yeah, you take the day off I mean, of work. It was, it was, <laughs> and so, I mean, it's a long story, but I ended up um, connecting with him the next day, when, right before they left in uh, the lobby of the hotel where he was staying. And he's kind of going through his bag. He's throwing out like little flyers and he's messing with his headphones. And he's, we're just talking like we've known each other forever. And he's like, I really want you to, um, I really want you to keep doing what you're doing. Like if you, uh, he's like, I don't know if we can pay you or not. I was like, pay me to do what? He's like, well, you know, the lyrics and the art. And I said, I would do that anyway. You know, like the fact that you notice it, it's incredible. And I, and it's just surreal. I'm talking to him uh, at the table and it was just uh, the beginning of this really incredible connection. Cause he's, like I said, very generous. So he ended up ultimately hiring me to do the, website content for publicenemy.com. I ran publicenemy.com for two years uh, where I wrote articles and I formatted pictures and I kept everything up to date for two years. And one of my proudest moments ever, 
because I didn't get paid a lot of money, but they did pay me. Uh, they 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 cut me a check like every six months, uh, and I I wanted to frame it because it says like pay to the order of Andy Katz, like public enemy, uh, you know, uh, bring the noise dot com. I was like, this is insane. I don't know how this happened, but yeah. and then whenever I would see him after that, he treated me like an old friend. Really, he and he I, I, he does that to a lot of people. I mean, I've I've seen other people that are in his circle. And he he has this ability to make people feel really special. But but the what you were talking about with the thing in the book, I I oh, actually I actually, I actually teared up. I mean, I was like, holy shit. Um he he he's introduced me that way before. He's like, hey, this is Andy Katz. Like he's he's one of my um art mentors. And I can't tell you what that means to me. It's it's incredible. Uh, cause he's one of my heroes, right? So for him to say that and to introduce me that way. And then when he put out his book, he had actually texted me cause I'm part of this mad urgency art collective that he put together. And he's like, Andy, um, list everyone in that is in mad urgency. So I can, and I was like, oh, he's going to put us in the book. And so, uh, when I got the book, I, I flipped through the back and sure enough, we're in the acknowledgments. I'm like, that's amazing. But two days before I got the book, somebody who I didn't know through Facebook was like, yo, you're in Chuck D's book. And I'm like, oh, I thought that might happen. That's really cool. Because it was, I thought it was going to be as the group. Yeah. And then when I, he, he's like, I was like, take a picture of it so I can see it. He says, no, no, I'm reading it right now. Like, I'll, and he did, <laughs> like, man, all right. So I ordered it immediately. And then it comes, two days, it comes two days later. And I, it, so it's on, it was really special because Chuck knows I'm a baseball fan. Chuck knows that my dad um, was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, and uh, was a Brooklyn Dodger fan. So on the page where he drew Ebbets Field is this paragraph, and it says, two of my art uh, uh, mentors are Andy Katz and Greg Krindler. And Greg Krindler and I have, have been put... We're connected by Chuck one day on Twitter where we're in a three-way conversation. And uh, Greg Krendler, by the way, is talk about an incredible artist. I mean, his work is like a whole other level, but he does a lot of baseball art too. And uh, it's just, it's incredible. I, I don't, I obviously don't mind talking about it. I, I try, I, I try not to bring it up too many times because people will get tired of this story, but I, man, no, I think it's, it's amazing. It's un- yeah, man. I never heard that story. And that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. I mean, this yeah, is. No, I remember when you posted uh, the little excerpt from the book, and then um, it was within days. I was at a Barnes and Noble, uh, like North Shore, and I, it was, you, I walked into the bookstore, and that book was just on a pedestal amongst other uh, hip hop books. And I was like, you know, to my wife, I'm like, check this out. I know this guy. <laughs> that's, so cool. that's so cool yeah and I, and then well there's another one called this day in rap and hip-hop history that chuck put together um it was based on like for years he had these two guys that were every day they'd put out like this is what happened today in hip-hop history and so they had they had the guts of a book and then they just turned it into a book so he he got his artists together for Mad Urgency, and we filled the book with imagery. So I had three pictures in that book. Well, one was Q-Tip, one was EPMD, and um, uh, oh, geez, what's the what's the oh, Big Daddy Kane? So um, that was thrilling too. Uh, so he's just been he's been extraordinarily generous with his time and his energy, and um, I I just count myself as really fortunate for for getting a chance to meet him and connect with him, but uh, awesome. never never get tired of talking about it. That for- that it sparked a uh, I hadn't thought about it in forever until you just said uh, the thing about the check, and uh, I I did uh, I worked with Danny and all the T-shirts for the uh, their 25th uh, House of Pain the anniversary tour they did on St. Patrick's Day and they came and they played at the Royal in Boston and. Um, yeah, I, I, he asked me to digitize all their old logos, and I can't. I mean, I don't know if you guys were the same way, but I remember remember having school books, and you'd make your own book cover out of like a paper bag, a shopping bag. <laughs> yeah, bar. absolutely, I do. I would draw that House of Pain logo over and over and over. That's and, awesome. And, and then there I am one day, I'm digitizing it, 
and I'm doing them in different colors. And then he says, hey, can we make some shirts? And we made a bunch of shirts. We had the Celtics spinning with the, the logo, uh, the, the shamrocks and shenanigans. And uh, we, we did a whole bunch of them. And um, I, we went to the show. He's like, who are you with? Uh, you know, I text him when I got there. So, no, it's just me and Nikki. And he's like, you know, come stage left or whatever. And we went back and that, that's when I heard about the outsider's house. And I just, I couldn't believe where I was. The, yeah. You know, I'm backstage with House of Pain. Uh, it's one of my favorite stories to tell because Everlast walked through and Danny goes, oh, um, this is my buddy Fred. Can let's, let's get a picture. And he took my phone. He says, no, you get in the picture. My wife says, who's that? Uh, <laughs> what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, what are you doing? <laughs> the same yeah. thing, but just popped in my head. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and then and then Everlast goes, hi, I'm Eric. And I'm like, I know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is embarrassing. And then I had to dance like, <laughs> you, know, like, you know, thank you for taking those photos. And then um, you know, yeah. a couple weeks later, I got a check and it was uh what is what is his co- it's like Margaret Inc. or whatever. And I, I wanted to frame the check. I'm like, I don't even want to cash this. I, I made the shirts. Yeah. Uh, I got paid for the job, but it's the, the again, the experience was boring. No doubt. And, yeah, and, man. I, that's so check. cool. That's yeah. great. Did you ever hear the, was it the Ricky Henderson story? I don't know if you're baseball fans or not, but I was talking about this with Rob Brady the other day. So Ricky Henderson, there's a story where he, he got a bonus check for a million dollars from, I think it was the Mets. And uh, he was so excited about it. He framed it and uh, never cashed it. And the Mets called him like six months later, like, um, hey, like, are, what's where's the check? He goes, oh, it's like hanging on my wall. <laughs> They're like, no, no, you need to you need to bring that and cash that. You need to deposit that. They'll give it back to you. But you know, we need to we need to put that in the <laughs> you bank. Balance the book. Yeah. Yeah. Got to balance the Mets book. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, my gosh. So. Oh man, that's cool. I, I love I love that you had that sort of similar uh, emotion, that similar experience, because it's hard to um, you know it's hard to bring some of these things up in casual conversation without. Um, exactly. I don't know, yeah, you come like across you're like uh, your name yeah. dropping or something, and right. it's like, no, no, I was genuinely twelve years old again. Yeah. Let me have it. Let me have it. I mean, right. and and it's funny. Uh, Tim was there that night. Jimmy Cash was there that night. Um, Mike Hanks. I don't know if you guys know Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike yeah. Hanks graduated high school with uh, with my cousin. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I hung out with Mike Hanks at, at the Voltage Lounge in Philly, which was the first time, again, super welcoming. Never met Danny Boy in that capacity. And I asked this when I was doing my last podcast. I just I wanted to do just like a 10, 15 minute in and out. I didn't want to impose on it because I knew he was performing that night. And he was like, yeah, man, just come back. And I hit him up on Facebook. I'm like, yo, I'm here. He's like, all right, just come to the backstage. And I was like, I've never even been here before. And I look and I see this big ass standing there and he's waving me over. And me and Nikki went all the way to the back, waved so that there's no noise. We pulled up folding metal chairs. And we had a conversation for like an hour. I felt like I was overstaying my welcome, but he was just going on and on about the outsiders and Delta like, Bravo stuff. I'm just like, this is fucking so dope. We didn't talk anything about House of Pain, no, no rap. It was like... Yeah, soda pop in fucking Tulsa. Like crazy. Yeah. Super fucking cool. It is. It's all good stuff, man. I, I actually get confused a little bit because there's so much overlap. Like you brought up Mike Hanks. And I'm yeah. thinking, how do I know him? Because I do. I feel like he was at MCA Day too. He was. He, he was okay. he was in there early. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. So he, vol- he like, volunteered at the event. Yeah. Uh, you know, right. I don't know if the first year, but definitely the second. And um yeah, that's just one of those small world things where it's like, you're here too? I mean, yeah. this is a guy that I would see when I was in high school at parties I probably shouldn't have been at with my older cousin, right? right. And then and now here we are all doing the same thing, and it's it's just wild. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely. A lot of wild things. So, Jimmy, do we uh, – I, I, I'm looking at my list of things to remember. Um, I wanted to ask Fred, is there anything um, – that you want to plug any kind of like uh, like Instagram or, or project or anything that you want to um, give some shine to? Uh, I mean, yeah, my my artist page on Instagram is Vector Sector underscore IG. Uh, that's open to the public. I post all my freelance work there and the, the pins and the coins and everything else. Um, I still do a lot of a lot of work uh, with musicians. Um, I'm not I'm not too dissimilar from what you do andy your your work is amazing it's very 
specific, wow, right. but I mean, I, even, even uh, a younger me, I spent a lot of time going to like underground hip hop shows and I would always make artwork to bring with me. And that really? was, that was like my bridge to like, awesome. like, I, I'm not going to try to get backstage and ask somebody, I'm just going to bring the artwork. And if that gets me an in to talk to somebody, I'm going to do it. So yeah, in my first house, uh, I actually had an office. Now, the, <laughs> this house, my office became a nursery two times over. Right. Uh, I used to just have a wall of artwork that I made that I brought to shows that the that those bands and musicians all signed. So when I see you doing that, like I that connects with me. Oh, that's great. Yeah, on like a real yeah. personal level because I I know exactly how that feels to do that, and uh, and but you do it with superstars. Yeah, right. I've always, right. I've always done it with like underground acts, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, people under the stairs, right? They're that's cool. Yeah, like that's their standout because that was my thirtieth birthday. Yeah. So I, I brought like forty plus people to their concert, but I made I made a legit flyer as if it was my party. Yeah, right. This and guy I, over here is taking pictures with Chuck D and KRS One. Like, right. Yeah. And rock him and fucking slick New- Rick. And what's <laughs> happening right now? Yeah, it's it's it is at its core. It's just like we, the same intention is really what I'm saying. Hundred percent, hundred percent. It it is, and and I think um, I feel like we're the same in that maybe we're a little more reserved. We're not going to be pushy about it. We're not going to um, be obnoxious about it. We kind of let the work be our ticket for adventure. That's what I always sort of said because if i didn't have the work with me i either i might not even go and two i definitely wouldn't be near the front or try to get backstage because then i would just be standing there um because i don't have i've never had the sort of the cool factor like i never look like i belong there i'm always like i kind of stand out like every once in a while someone will look over and like why is this guy here <laughs> you know, that's me and that actually happened at the, the roots picnic a couple of, uh, uh, i was back there i had black thought artwork i had j period artwork i was having it i um uh, you needed a wristband to be back there and i didn't have the wristband but i got back there because i had the artwork and th- those guys were great like black thought came over and j period came over and was, we got pictures and everything but one of the one of the security guards finally like he was doing his job. He's like, yeah, who are you? Yeah. He's like, nah, <laughs> you get out of here. And I'm like, no, really? I was just hanging out with these guys. He's like, get out of here. You know? So I, 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 uh, I know that sometimes it's short lived. I never get an attitude about it. I never get, uh, too confident about it. Uh, I always try to appreciate it. So I think it sounds like you had that same approach with, uh, taking work and, and, uh, kind of let, letting the artwork do the, the talking for you. That's great. Always, yeah, and in, in it it generally opens more doors than it closes, right? People see that you put a little bit of effort and passion into it, and uh, if the work's good, especially not. I mean, I don't want that to sound conceited or anything, but if the work is actually quality, they're receptive to it, right? It's not just your high school acrylic painting where you're like, I made this. Like, you, you, right. I, I always approach it from a graphic design standpoint, anyway. So if I'm gonna show some work to an artist who i admire it, it's got to be my best work sure. yeah yeah i i went uh this time last year i i i uh, saw diggable planets who i've always loved and uh yeah. I, I think they're criminally underrated i don't know why they didn't become you know like these global superstars they're just so cool and their music really appeals to me and i think it appeals to a really wide range of people but I went to this little club in DC and uh, uh, I have a little bit of an in with Craig, who's Doodlebug, uh, Craig Irving. And he's, he was, they're just so nice. You know, it's like De La Soul. They're, they're just so nice about it. Uh, they make you feel like you do belong. They make you feel like, yeah, like, come on back. And I, I just, that's, that's sort of like my drug of choice. I, I just, I have so much fun. Um connecting with people through the art and just showing that I appreciate their music. And I don't know, there's nothing better than that. It's always nice when somebody you look up to or somebody who is of some sort of sort of stature or or fame or whatever, and they're still humble and they don't have that ego because there's some of them, obviously that there are, but I mean, I've been fortunate, not just like hip hop people. Like you probably saw like Joe Torrey, the fucking, the manager for the Yankees was in my job like a couple of months ago. And it was just the weirdest, yeah. it was the weirdest thing. And 
he, he was actually looking to, to rent a, a, a space in my building for his foundation. So like under those circumstances, I didn't want to be the guy to be like, oh, can I get a picture? And like, he's like, I don't know how he is. So you'd be like, oh, here we go. You know, you know, I'm going to be working in a, in a place and people are going to want my pictures. Like I need to get away from that. But he was like, absolutely. He's like, sure, no problem. And he's like, and he was like, what's your name, kid? I'm like, Jimmy. He's like, I'm Joe. And he puts his hand out. I'm like, yeah, I think I know who you are, Joe. <laughs> you know, he's like, you ever wear a World Series ring? I'm like, nah, not, not lately, man. He's like, can't put this on. He takes it off and he puts the fucking, the 98 World Series ring on my fucking finger. And he's like, get in here and take a picture. I'm like, all right, I got to make it quick because I don't want my bosses to like, see, he's like, he's like, don't worry. If your boss says anything, I'll tell him that I wanted a picture with you. I'm like, that's like the coolest fucking yeah. thing ever, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, I, was, I was how, having a heart attack in my yeah. chest. There's the people who know how to be yourself. famous. There's just people who know how to be famous and they know that it, you know, it's a two second thing, but it means a lot to you. And uh, yeah, I feel like Cal Ripken's like that. I feel like Chuck D's like that. Uh, sounds like Joe Torrey's like that. So yeah, that's, that's yeah, there's a whole don't meet your heroes things kind of out the window for me. Cause yeah. You know, if, if you do meet someone that you, you admired and they let you down, that's who they are. It's fine. They might've right. let you down, but nine times out of 10, they're cool. It's a great experience. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at that same show, you know, at the, the House of Pain, like they got called out on stage. We were just sitting around talking. And Danny leans over, goes, Hey, showtime, Freddie, gives me a pound. I'm like, well, you know, it's he's about to go do his job. I'm just hanging out. And it was, yeah. it was it, you can't you can't recreate those memories, right? No. It's like, thanks for being a a, a good person. Yeah. Right. Uh, inviting right. and welcoming yeah. and just a regular guy you know yeah. appreciate it and here we yeah. all are. we're all friends yeah, yeah man so that, that's perfect so that, thanks for being a good person like that's perfect yeah that's right that's perfect yeah. jimmy do we have to do uh sponsors do you yeah, have of course sponsors? we do come on man they're all delta bravo related people we have, of course course we have to do sponsors. I, I usually do them right off the top of my head but there is one that we, that we 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 turned off right there's right. one we don't mention anymore. We don't mention one of them. Okay. <laughs> you want to do it? You, you, you yeah, can do sure, it. why not? What? I haven't done this in a while. It's like I have to press, press the button yeah. on my neck. Right? And I have to close my eyes or else it doesn't come out right. Um, all right. The, uh, <laughs> you, he was actually mentioned before as the first person probably to go to uh, Haystack Rock over in Astoria. Um, Tom Lafever, the owner of Main Street Jukebox. Follow Main Street Jukebox on Instagram at Main Street Jukebox, M-A-I-N-S-T Jukebox. There's also MainStreetJukebox.com. They also have a fan page. They are, they've are they been around, I believe, since 1994. Um, they survived the whole COVID thing. There's a mom and pop record store. They are located on Main Street in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. He's a great dude. And uh I kind of feel like I slided them a little bit. So apologies in advance, because I was supposed to hit a Harry Chapin spot with him. And I just happened to be passing through and it was right there. So I did it and I posted. He's like, oh, you hit the spot. Very cool. I'm like, oh. Like, did I, you get I, to the shop? Did you get Did you go to no, shop? No, because I actually, I was going to stop in and it was a Sunday and they were closed. Uh, okay. I even told them, I was like, I'm going to stop there. in the shop. But I was like, how dare you be closed, you know, being stupid. But yeah, uh, I want to get so, up there. It's not that close, though. It's like three and a half hours, I think, from me. From you? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I was not far from you on my way back because I hit that. I got you went to point. Baltimore. You went to Baltimore. You were yeah, really close. I, to it me. was straight through. When you mentioned Camden Yards, I passed right by Camden Yards and went up. You did the Edgar Allan Poe house, right? Yeah, real quick. Quick fix. Yeah, it was a Baltimore spot, that I, a Maryland spot that I needed. Um, Tell me, man, you got to watch The Wire. Uh, you'll you'll watch them. I'm going to co-sign that 100%. Yeah, I man. tried like twice. I Maybe a third time's a charm. I don't it's, know what it is. You got to get like Stick four with it. episodes in. And then yeah. you know, the, the pilot, the first two, three episodes, you got to you gotta give it some time. It's slow, okay. but man, yeah. it's some of the best character development. That's, that's like Better Call Saul. The first yeah, the whole yeah. season is like, oh my God. But it's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant character development. Anyway, Main Street Jukebox, our boy Tom LaFever, Delta Bravo. Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Shout out, Tom. Shout yeah. out to Tom. And also Kevin Bednaz, who is uh who owns three establishments, pubs slash eateries in Purcellville, Virginia. You have 
the Percival Pub, you have Percival Eats, and the Ashburn, Ashburn Pub. Right. He's another guy. He's like an entrepreneur with all these things. He's a ridiculous artist. He goes out and hits spots all over. He was hitting me up. He's like, I'm going to Colorado. I need spots from the movie Things to Do in Denver when you're dead. I'm like, ah, I'm trying, bro. I'm looking for you. But but Kevin Bednoz is a great dude. And, and all, of, all of his establishments are on Instagram. Like I said, at The Percival Pub. The other one on Instagram is at Ashburn Pub and at Percival Eats. So, yeah, so, they have websites. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're anywhere in Virginia around in the vicinity – Go grab something. Personal Eats is just like comfort food and stuff, but then the pubs have, you know, full bars, everything like that. And he's a super, super, super good guy. Big you know what, Ke- what Kevin did, la- I think it was last year, he always does Inktober. And he, like you yes. said, he's a really great artist. Yes, this is what he did. He did um, every year. But he, he switches it up. Like one yeah. year he would draw like on a record. And then this year he did, it was just called the mixtape. Yeah. And he put up 31 different movies and you could buy it and it all goes all of the uh it all goes to still brave childhood cancer which um i did an episode of this podcast with tom mitchell who was an incredible like that dude would change your life dude like he did two ted talks on youtube that dude's a powerful dude and um what he did this year was i picked a clockwork orange but he did it old school style i don't know this is red but like an old school and then there's and the whole gatefold and each each movie has its own thing and blah blah blah. And it has all the still brave stuff. And uh that's what I was gonna bring up. It's really brilliant how he, he put it's, it into it, that cassette, it can't shrink wrap, cassette it comes tape. with a tape, yeah, and so good. It, it's it's super cool and brilliant stuff, man. And and you know, you know, you pay him and and all the proceeds go to childhood cancer research. And it's not like the medical stuff, it's like the other kind of stuff like that you don't really think about, like. Right. There's a couple who has a child horribly with cancer and it's like, okay, well, one person has to stay home and the other person has to go to work. So now all the finances and stuff. So he'll pay he'll pay mortgages and rent. And he paid for way too many funerals and like all of this stuff, this still brave stuff goes all towards non-medical childhood cancer to help out families. So he Kevin introduced me to Tom and like I can't say anything. I can, I, I can only say good things about both of them guys. So big shout out to Kevin Bednars and all of his establishments. So support all of the, the, the sponsors are all Delta Bravo people. And I always have to put out, follow the, this, this, you know, on Instagram, it's at Delta Bravo mission statements and the page on Instagram, Delta Bravo Urbex team. And of course the outsider's house and Delta, everything Delta Bravo. I think that we've shouted out. All of our listeners at this point. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Everybody. This is a heavy right? shout out episode. Yeah, it's a I collective. Love it. no, I love it. Listen, it's, it's a team, right? It's all good. Yeah, it's definitely 100%. great. Stuff, I hope we didn't neglect yeah. anybody. Well, if we yeah. neglected you, it's not personal. Yeah. So, you know. So now we got we got to get more people on too. I I I I'm so glad that, that Fred uh finally got a little bit of of uh of due attention. You know, we've been uh i've admired fred for a long time and and just like uh, my room here is i'm surrounded by all of his artwork all of his uh all of the coins and stickers and everything so um there's a couple of things uh that fred is working on uh for me uh i threw him a few ideas um so i i don't know how i don't know yeah, how much I, we can I, talk i wanted about i wanted to have that logo done before before this but i've been flat out and i just it's uh, I'm not in any so rush. close. I just I I kind of um had a little breakthrough with it. So when I shoot it over to you, I hope you like it as much as I do. But it is it going to be like just a logo? You're going to make some shit out of it. Besides, stickers? Well, we'll see. I mean, it's it's a, it'll be a logo for now. But uh, yeah, there's there's every, every one of these logos happen, can yeah. turn into merch. I mean, it, it can that's happen right. in four weeks, right? Awesome. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's so, right, so, cool. so we know that Fred, yeah. Fred's favorite is the Goonies doubloon. What's yeah. your favorite coin, Andy? Gun to your head. Because I have several, but you know, I gotta, you know. I think I already said it. And I think it's the I think it's the uh Astoria coin, the uh the one that looks like a, a, a half dollar. What about the what about just, the Delta Bravo challenge coin? I, I have that too. I have no, I'm saying watch one of those. Oh, um well I like the I have the uh the shiny um New York City subway token one. 
I don't have the the uh, patinaed one, but I me I, love that. I think that's brilliant. Um, I, I also like a lot of like the classic stuff. Like I like the nomads, uh, the nomads one. Actually, I really like this one too. This one is the um, the St. Patrick's Day one. That's that's awesome. Yeah. The other side of that's beautiful, isn't the it? On, the sculpt on that one came out. Look at that on the other side. That's, that's beautiful, right there. Yeah, it really is. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, it's I, tough, this, man. This is my second favorite. I brought it down for the show. Oh, good. I don't know. If there we can, you go. How do we do it? How do we do it? It's, it's a, it's a stupid up. zoom. Uh, it's not going to work. No, no, it's okay, right there. You go. I can see it there. All right. So that's the uh, the 20, House of Pain one. Twenty fifth anniversary House of Pain with the lyrics on the edge, and that's the oh, uh, it's the on the around the single. Yeah, so yeah, really? For me. Yeah. You just had it. You just had it framed up like that. I that's just I, yeah. I, I brought the tape with me, and then um, I just I put it in the shadow box with that coin. I have did, that you say, did you just say single? Because I I said that. Yes, he did. And my yes, daughter sir. was like, "What?" <laughs> and I was like, "You have no idea." Yeah. She's like, "Did yeah. you make that up?" And I'm like, "No, I didn't make that up." That's uh, I put many of the singles back in my day too. You can't yeah. be cool and say a single though. I hate to say it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. I just did it. <laughs> Damn right. And I repeat, I co-signed it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I can't. I guess I can't. But no, I there's so many cool ones that you've made. It's it's yeah, awesome. it's ridiculous. Uh, it really is. I mean, the I, I have city one backwards. is awesome with the backwards, you know, the, the, the reverse writing on the fear city one. Yeah. Oh, you know, it was, it was an early one. I think, Fred, I think you did this. I'm, I guess you had to have done this. But uh, I ended up giving it to Jimmy. It was a gift uh, that I sent you uh, a couple years ago. It was the glow in the dark, um, uh, rubber, the rubberized one with the Velcro on the back. Patch. Oh yeah, yeah. The tech. That was cool. that was cool. And it, it glows in the dark, right? Yeah, there's several that glow in the dark. Yeah, I, I all the glow in the dark stuff. I love. I love. Yeah. yeah. It's it's you know you don't want it to become like a shtick and everything does it, but. The you know, Fear City obviously made sense. The early Nomads pieces made sense. Yeah, yeah. I keep them in the headliner of my truck. All the uh, all those patches because not everybody has hook and loop backpacks, right? Not everybody has a tactical assault bag. Right. right. If you're looking, if you if you like those patches and you want some place to put them, they stick right to your headliner, and it's, it's a nice place to display them. You always oh, get the yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess so. I saw I saw Danny Johnson. I think it was in the episode that I did with him. He had a fear city patch on his hat i'm like hold on did those come out like i missed that he's like nah man i just you know i sewed the patch onto a hat whatever i'm like all right dope so i did the same thing so we it was dark or whatever i shut the lights out my daughter was with me and she looked at my hat and she was like you gotta be kidding me i'm like (laughs) what she's like you're such a nerd i'm like no i'm not this fucking rules right now Yeah, she's like, are you kidding me, Dad? <laughs> I actually have black light flashlights that I use to take all those product shots. So I, I charge them up, shut the lights off, and then shoot them because you get you get an extra quick glow from the black light. Um, Even the glow uh, in the dog cool, portions man. of the coins, man. They're great. Yeah, you know what? The uh, the Crime City patches, I made those, and I forgot that those glow in the dark because they're stitch, right? The PVC ones. You can yeah. almost guarantee that the white's yeah. going to glow in the dark, but I forgot that we ordered the stitch as glow in the dark. And it was literally, I went to go to sleep and my backpack was just glowing off in the corner. <laughs> That's awesome. It's like, That's right. I didn't even take photos of those. So that, that <laughs> I had to get one out and reshoot it because it was, it's like a whole product feature that wasn't even on the page yet. Right. <laughs> so dope. Yeah. These little small attention to details. Like I love all that shit, man. So yeah, I'm, I I I want. I, I I feel like I need more Delta Bravo stuff, and I, I buy all the outsiders stuff and all that stuff. I all the House of Pain. I want more Delta Bravo shit. I don't know, Danny. Yeah, I, need, gonna, I need more. Write in the suggestion Delta. box. Yeah, you got something coming down the pike, there, guy. I, there's there's a whole bunch of things that have just they're. Uh, I I can't I can't say it enough. I know. Man, the man has a million ideas. And um, that's one thing I can relate to. I haven't run out yet. Right. So I feel like as long as we're on uh, on this planet, we're going to keep making them. Awesome. 
That's great. Well, I guess you should uh, be fucking buying them. God. (laughs) That's right. That's why I have to stay busy so I don't buy everything. No, Um, I have to stay busy with overtime so I can afford everything. Right. Yeah. So I guess we should wrap it up. Um, We've been going for, I guess, over an hour and a half. And I want to be be, uh, respectful of all everybody's time. And um, but man, it's uh, this is such a good first step. I feel like now. If I'm going up to New England, I know who to call. And then uh, oh, also, yeah. if you're coming through the area, please let me know. I mean, yeah, man. Well, especially like seeing what you all did with uh, with Joe Kelly and, and uh, Tim True coming out. And uh, J- you got to you gotta say Jimmy Granara as well. Right. right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Jimmy's a good dude, man. I had him on after I met. I never met him before that day. I never met Tim True. I never met Fred in person yet. None of those guys I met in person yet, except for Danny Johnson. And I got I got tentative plans with Jimmy uh, to do a spot nearby here, and uh, with Joe Kelly to go up to a to a there you go. hockey rink that I don't want to go without him because he and I did a lot of the little back and forth on that. So yeah, uh, yeah. Fred, Fred leaves me little sticky notes with locations for me to hit for his whole little departed thing. Oh, both of you guys. I mean, I Andy, I can't tell you how how long I hunted for that train station building from the wire for you, and I'm I'm so glad someone else found it. And yeah. then, um, what did I find? Uh, the diner from The Watcher. Yes, for me. Oh, okay. right. Right. Yeah, it's like, right. you know, I, I hear I hear you guys talking. I listen to all the shows. And, um, yeah. it, you know, if I can do a little a little wandering through Google myself. Yeah, I uh, found it. But that place was closed. I think it was it, it, that that place is about to be destroyed. So it's almost gone. It was closed for business. Yeah. So so I'm glad you brought that up about like people kind of helping out and finding like white whales and finding things for people because shout out to uh Aaron. Uh her her, her Instagram is Aaron um what is it, Aaron Nerds and stuff. What I'm trying to think of what it is, but she listened to the episode where I threw out my white whale about uh the wire and the bench where Omar and Bunk are having their argument. And um I threw out like some possibilities. I thought maybe Patterson Park. So she doesn't live in Baltimore. Uh, she, I think she lives in the Midwest or maybe even uh, California. And she said something. She sent me a whole uh, uh, message the next day. She's like, I think I found it. And she had all these aerial shots of old Patterson Park. And I think she did find it. So I have to go down there and try to line it up, even though the building is gone. Uh, mm. But I wanted to... Uh, there's um i think i talked to uh jimmy about this on one of the previous episodes when i was out in london um there's a there's a jay-z spot that people were trying to find i saw it on reddit of all things somebody had thrown it out there uh not a delta bravo person but there was like does anybody know where this is and it's jay-z in a mercedes benz like 1988 or something he's super he's super young and he's He's pulling out of a, a parking spot. He's looking at the person who's taking the picture. It's just a regular uh, hard copy uh, Polaroid picture. And it's it's this really nondescript b- background of a bunch of homes on any London street anywhere. And I had talked about it on Jimmy's podcast and on Rand's podcast. And sure enough, this guy, Justin, who... I think he's movie locations hunter on Instagram. He's like, Andy, is this it? And he he had gone on Google Maps and found it. And he circled it. And he's like, look at the different architectural elements. They all match up. I'm like, damn, you found it. And he found it because I had sort of said, I don't think it's in Notting Hill. I think it's near Battery Studios where he was recording. And so we kind of collectively narrowed it down to this neighborhood. And then he narrowed it down to the street and the address. And awesome. he and he doesn't live there. So Nick Light, the, the director of the, the little movies we're putting together, he is from uh, uh, England. He's going back to England this week. And he's like, Andy, I'm going to hit that spot. So he's the director of the movies. But now he's going to he's going to do Delta Bravo. Right. He's going to go. Awesome. Up, he's going to take the pictures. And then we're going to make make a little hopefully make a little six or seven minute film about that whole thing because that was totally crowdsourced it was somebody else throughout the like where is this and there was a whole thread of people guessing and people saying you're never going to find it because every street in london looks like that and together we found it and it's awesome i love it i love it's like all the whole process of you can find anything if, yeah. if you if you work hard enough at it yeah, yeah. 
Joe Kelly asked me, he's like, what spots you want to hit? Send me everything you want to hit so I can map it all out because I'll know everything. I send him everything. As soon as they get in the car, he's like, okay, we're going here first. Boom. And it's just like strategic. I'm like, it's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Like, okay. Like I could have did that, but the way he does it, it's, it's, I won't have to be searching. He probably, he hardly even uses his GPS. He's like, oh, that's over here, over here, over here. And he just goes, it's just like, it just makes it so much more fun, you know? Yeah. 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 Especially if they have the working knowledge of the city and the history too. It's great. 100%. Yeah. It's yeah. like a guided tour hitting spots. Yeah. Yeah, I'll see you in a couple of weeks, Fred. I'll be here. Yeah, I'll be there. Andy, you Fred, thanks come. for doing this. This was Andy, great. I appreciate the invite, Andy. This is awesome. And um, you know, on your episode, Joe's episode, uh, Tom, you guys have like all given me shout outs here. And Danny and then a hundred percent Ellie, their episode. Like I, I've heard my name on this show enough times. I've I did the logos. I, I've always kind of felt like a part of the show. Um, cool. Good. I was I was happy to hear the invite though it was uh this was fun, awesome long overdue but I'm so yeah, glad like I said right way in the happen. beginning way long overdue I'm, yeah. I'm sure everybody does the same thing you start wondering what are we gonna talk about yeah. Uh, yeah. How, next thing you know you go two hours yeah, we're and gonna we fill two out. hours with my anecdotes that's what we're gonna do and here yeah we are. yeah we're yeah, well, like ten minutes ago we're like okay we're gonna wrap up next thing you know we're talking about Jay Z in London it's like yeah. it all the time. <laughs> I well, I, I was just going to bring something else up because you just made me think of it. Um, so I just we just Nick Light and I just did this Virginia Turbot uh documentary with its the Depeche Mode photographs, it's like six or seven minutes long. And uh, I, I'm just on this new kick where I, I want to meet the photographers who took the pictures, like that's my I've gotten really into that. So, Sean, uh, so that's just it. Uh, uh, Sean Murphy just was on, and I, I love talking to him. He's a character, and he that was a great a episode. Of, man. And, and, yeah, he had a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, Sean Murphy's like a good dude. Like I like that guy. I a lot of incredible stories. So Virginia, I reached out to her, and you know, to your point, uh, Fred, she's like, I, she's like, yeah, I took those pictures in 1981, but I, I don't think I remember anything about that day. I'm like, that's all right, like. I'll refresh your memory. What for about you. all of what about their pictures of of everyone else? Like she took pictures of a lot of people uh, over a long period of time. It's socio political. It's all any British uh, pop star you can think of. She was there for it, and her pictures are really amazing. And the the Depeche Mode ones are, are stunning. I just think they're beautiful photos. So we could just talk about the technical part of her photos for an hour. It doesn't or, or 20 minutes or 10 minutes, whatever. But I, I really like this connection with um, the people who were there who can speak to uh, uh, why they were drawn to taking the pictures. It doesn't have to be like, tell me everything you remember about Martin Gore. I don't, you know, she might not know him. I mean, Sean Murphy, I, he, he said that he only ever shot the beastie boys that one time. But he also had this incredible other career with like Weezer and 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 Rage Against the Machine, and he tells that ridiculous story about Timmy Comerford riding his mountain bike off a fire escape. Like that's yeah. <laughs> Sean Sean Murphy also said he thought in his youth, by the time he was forty, he'd have to find a new career. Yeah, and I that that's I said that yeah. I said that when I was in school. I'm like, I'm going to do this for a few years. By the time I'm forty. I'll just teach and, and uh, I'll stay creative, but you know, yeah. how am I going to stay relevant after that age? I'm in my forties and I'm not stopping. Right? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's just, but it, uh, yeah, that really, it, that just hit my ear in such a funny way to hear Sean say that. Cause oh my, yeah. it was so, it was just relatable literally. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That's really cool. And it just speaks to like how, uh, it, it's it's not about the photo it's not about the mash it's about these anecdotes these stories these uh well, the behind the shared scenes, experiences but behind the scenes stuff yeah absolutely yeah, I, just, I just did a bunch of uh departed shots and one of them i wanted to do uh was a, a scene where they're walking up along um one of the state buildings jimmy you might have even done it but the pillars you know it's like the aspect ratio of how it's filled. i i know where, it's where um DiCaprio is walking with Vera Farmiga. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, cause it's, it's the end of the day and you just don't give a shit or whatever the line is. Right. It, yeah. It's, it's right next door to where your background is. Yeah, I stood exactly behind it and I stood in the yes. location and I said, it's rock spot. 
and I can't, I can't do it. I got but, it somehow. But I just stayed a couple minutes longer and I was, I was just happy to be there. I'm like, look, I found it. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't prove it. Yeah. The picture's <laughs> never I did it. Up. I did. It was yeah. freezing that when I was standing on those steps in your background, my hands were killing me. It was so cold. And I, are you from up in the Northeast? I don't like the cold. I'm a bitch when it comes to the cold. I'll be the first one to say it. I don't give a shit how <laughs> everyone views me. So next thing you know, I'm I'm in the back over there and I'm like on my knees. I'm looking, I'm, I'm, I'm zooming in on my screenshot. I'm counting the pillars. I'm like, I'm like, well, this is the pillar. And the angle is super weird with the lens or whatever it is. Yeah, I was able they, to, had, they directed that with the pillars all line up. And yeah, there's no way you can do that with an iPhone. It is not possible. Yeah, you, you, I you did a like portion of it. One. Exactly. Yeah. That's a smart solve because yeah. you grab that last pillar and then and then they fade into it. I'm like, yeah, because there's done. no way you can get that entire thing. So I had to kind of dwindle down my screenshot into an area where it would line up. But you're not getting the whole broad field of view from the movie. No way. Well, but, it, you know, regardless, I was like, this is it. I found it. I know yeah. where it is. And it's just cool to be there. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah. that. I love, I love that you're a huge Departed fan because I love that movie. And it's weird because you're hitting and I, I still have Departed shots. Like, I only have, like, two more that I want to get when I'm in Boston. And that's Nicholson's house when he's getting out and he's about to get into the car. And he's about to be, you know, uh, DiCaprio is watching him. And then there's um, the rooftop shot. The, Roo the rooftop has been that's been on my list for. Well, that's what Danny has his drone for. Oh, I can't. We have to get it because I mean, I, I want to get up to the roof. I've I may or may not have gone into adjacent buildings and taken the elevator all the way up to see if I can just get from one roof to the other. Yeah, I I've tried to approach that every which way. I don't know how you can get up there. So the drone might be the only way. But well, it is it is the same building that Martin Sheen gets thrown off of, right? It's about a block over. It's not, it's that it's it's you're in the same neighborhood, but the actual rooftop is not the rooftop of the building that he's flying off of. Oh, uh, okay. But All I can right. put you onto it. I know exactly where it is. And if okay. you're it might be building, on that, it might be on that whole thread that we're on. Joe might have said something about it. I'll revisit that and, and we'll try to get and, it. And I'm happy to share it on that thread too. It's it's no problem. It's you can almost see it from that building, but that might be right. one of my favorite matches is having Martin Sheen falling off the roof. That's crazy. Yeah. So that's what that's what the drone is for. You froze up, Fred. What happened to you? Oh, yeah, he is frozen. Freddy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You still hear me, Jim? I still hear you. Hopefully he'll, he'll click back into place. Um, yeah, but speaking of getting thrown off of the roof, uh, I, I, I was thinking of, like, the, um, the untouchable stuff from Chicago because there's that whole um, Frank Nitty getting thrown off the roof, too. I, I think he's logging back on. Yeah, um, hey, there he is. Everybody yeah. froze. It was just like static. Uh, oh, you, you were only frozen for me and Andy. Oh, you know, yeah. you guys were frozen for me, and I I could hear uh, you, but nobody. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, I hope that uh, didn't screw up the recording too. Oh, no, yeah. I, I made some small talk. It's good. If anybody's still listening two hours in, good on them. You know? Is this live? I thought this was no, like, no, yeah, no, this is no, recorded no. and you do post, right? Yeah, that's right. I yeah. said that I, you know, who does it for me? Um, he, I think he's up in Canada, the guy Motion Kitchen. Oh, that guy rules. Huh? Yeah, he said that, said that guy rules. The, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Danny, Danny put me on to him. Yeah, I... He did I, the intro, I, right? Yeah, I just... I, I, You're going to send this to me, Andy, and then I zip it up and I send a Dropbox to him. And when he gets to it, he gets to it. Usually, I, I'm just... Usually, it's like within 24 hours, he emails me the whole thing and then I put it up. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Well, give me, give me, uh, give me one of those departed lace curtain intros. I will. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get like a, I'll, like he's, he's like, I'll, I'll send him a clip from YouTube, and I'm like, yo, just like from like this minute to the, like this second to this second, and he'll fade it in and just do a quick. Yeah. Speaking of that, Fred, where I'll send him a departed thing. The ring, like how many rings are there? The one that you that you have in the picture. 
I, I don't, don't have any. Yeah, there's a few. That one, um, I mean, I don't get down with a lot of jewelry, but that one has under underneath behind the Nomads logo is a pirate flag. Oh, so cool. that one I wanted in particular. Yeah. 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 I don't have any rings. I would it's like a little, one. it's a little big in it. I need to get it sized, but the thing is the way it's blackened. If you cut it down and put it back together, all that blackening is going to fall out. It's going to have to get touched. So yeah. that's a little bit in a drawer right now, but um, oh, it's perfect I'll, I'll get it fixed. I just got to get the right guy. It's perfect for your flyer picture, though. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, well funny. I, I was, was just like a tease. Like, I'm like, you know, all right, it's him kind of in the back. It's, it was like, a, I thought it was the perfect teaser photo. Yeah. Well, I said, I said to you, I'm like, you dug deep for that one. You said it was in your profile pictures. Yeah. And I got like five profile pictures. So, but it's five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. It's kind of him. It, it's him, but it's, yeah. I figured it was a good tease. But yeah. So well, once we wrap up, just, just make sure you zip up everything and just drop box it to me or whatever you want to do. And yeah. I go to the motion kitchen. As soon as I get it, I'll send it to him. Did we miss anything, Andy? Did I did I gloss over too much? No, I I, I hell no, man. Tell me, is there any is there anything else you want to um you want to promote or talk about? Um, I know um I have a little bit of a a, a project that I would I would love to run by you and and Danny. Um, I don't, I'm not ready to talk about it in detail, but I've been playing around with some of my own ideas, inspired by your logos and inspired by the uh, Outsiders House and. Um, I'm just trying to uh, think in the, in the same way as you guys do. I'm like, how how can we do something unique but that's real high quality? Because I feel like that's the common thread between all of your pins and your stickers. It's all like a beautiful design, and every time you, it's it's not it's not hacky. It's like a really good uh, and it's the simplicity of it and the boldness and the simplicity. Yeah. I think is what's awesome. They're not like convoluted or super busy it's just like Three, yeah. and here it is like from yeah. a distance you know what it is i appreciate yeah. you guys that's yeah, uh, agreed it's true yeah it's so good to hear it any there's so many good ideas that come out and there's a lot of a uh, bootleg version of logos that are flying around and sometimes there's nuggets in them that i'm like oh i like that and, but often i feel like i need to get my hands on them and clean them up and then just spit them back out and say i I, I can see I can see the approach, but I wanna I wanna get it official. Yeah. If I can say that. You can of course you can say that. You're, you're the official you're logo. Guy. The, uh, <laughs> so when I went to the UK for the second time, uh there's a guy, Lee Hodgkiss, who you, you yes. might have Yeah, I, so, I've done some work for him. Yeah. Right. He so, spots all over the place. That dude is busy. Yeah, and he lives, I guess, in Blackpool. So there's a lot of people that have come through that, and I guess it's near Manchester or near enough. So those are places I didn't get to, but I have to, I should probably apologize to him, even though I've mashed up a couple things for him in the past. And I really, I, but I, but I remember when I went, you had just minted the Delta Bravo UK uh, um, uh, logo. And I used it like a hundred times before he ever got to use it. And I felt right. kind of and bad. That's, that's how it happens. I, I did, <laughs> I, I did those Las Vegas and sin cities for Rob. And I think other yeah. people grabbed him before he had the chance. He's like, can I live? I mean, yeah, we just shared it and they're already on photos, but that uh, really, that wheel is, you know, that, it, that look, was we're awesome. All, it's a team, right? We're all on the same team. For sure. Yeah. Have at it. That's, that's how I feel about it. If it's yeah. out there, it's up for grabs, have at it. That's of right. Course. That's cool. Man. Share locations, help people out. You know, like like we were saying before, it's like you were so excited to see that 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 artifact went to you know to a story and stuff like that. Like I, I'm the same way. When I see certain people going to certain spots, I'm like, whoa, like that's fucking awesome. Like when Danny Johnson first went to the bars, and when he was when he was in um down yeah. in New Orleans with yeah. the Angel Hearts, because that's one of my favorite movies with Mickey Rourke and De Niro. And I was just like, like that is bucket list for me. Like yeah, I, I, I asked Danny Johnson to find true detective spots. I'm like, if you're, if you're there, do you mind? And he was on it. Yeah. Like, he doesn't care. He loves the hunt too. Oh, yeah. yeah. He even say, he even says it. He's like, I have so many things that I haven't posted that I hit years ago. It's like, I just go out. I just keep on going out. I it's like, I want to just go and explore. And, and that's what he's all about. And, and someone coined it originally. I don't remember who it was, but I've since stolen it or whatever. But it's the mash is just basically the end product of it. I mean, that's what it is. 
You know, what we've been saying it in, in so many different ways throughout these last two hours. It's it's all about the experience and all the behind the scenes. And just it just so happens that the mash is just the the end. Result. It's the period at the end of the sentence. It's like whatever. You know what I mean? But it's fun. I love getting the hell out of here. And I'll be on a lunch break and I'll be like, oh, shit. Like, that's all right. That's a 22 minute walk. I'm like, all right, I can go and walk there and take my shots and get back and be back to work by the time my lunch break is over. And I'll go do that. You know what I mean? It's just. I don't know, man. I always had this kind of a, uh, I wonder where that was film type shit ever since I was a little kid. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Andy, you mentioned it on your episode. I picked your brain about a biz shot and you were like, that's not New York. That's, that's London. Yeah. Then, oh, you were the, you were the catalyst for the. And then, and then how many thing. months later you're over there with the fam and yeah. you're doing the whole <laughs> cold chilling. Photo shoot. Right. Yeah, the that's whole right. set. And I, I, again, that was an, another moment where I was like, man, I, I felt like I was there with you. Yeah. At first, like it was just, I was so happy to see you in that location because I'm not making it there right now. Right? You and me both. Right. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, when that's such a cool feeling when if someone reaches out and says, well, do you know where this is? And if you know, that's incredible. You're like, I know where that is. I haven't been there yet. But then when I went there, I was like, yeah, you, you had, you had just brought that up. And then all of a sudden I found myself there almost by accident, like three months later or whatever it was. And then that turned into the David Corio thing uh, where, where we got to film it. And um, it, it's just so cool. All of it just came together beautifully. Yeah, man. It's awesome. Yeah. You put me onto that, uh, you know, Biggie freestyling on the corner. You gave me that address. Did yeah. you go there? Yeah. I did. Yeah, it's on the page. Yeah, you can find nice. it. I, I think yeah. I shared this with you, Jimmy, for the year. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 in your little folder. It's in your folder on my phone with the ten, you know, swipe on Instagram things when I put up. Yep, that's part of I'm it. I'm just trying to pick out a, a handful of favorites. Made sure there's a beasties in there. A few, a few yeah. logos, like the acronym logo I did. That was the, ch- the cutting um, board. Well, yeah, it's on the cutting board. It's I want one of them. Massachusetts. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. <laughs> Is that a whole American, the, the uh, America, is there one that's the United States and it's a cutting board? Yeah, there were, there were a handful of like, yeah, U.S. silhouettes. And then there were a bunch that of- That would look so good in my kitchen. I don't have one of those. I, <laughs> I know. I, that I was know. one of those things where I was like, I didn't really want the, the whole map, but I, I had asked Danny on the side, you know, do you do different states? And then um, I feel like he surprised me with that one. And it, that's it, so it, cool. And it, and it had the acronym logo awesome. and I just- I just put it up and um, yeah, that's, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, man. That shit's awesome. Someone, I don't remember who, but I have two or three of the original wooden Delta Bravo coasters. Yeah. It's all from the same time. We yeah. should get, we should connect with, uh, do you know the guy Def? He does deaf rugs. I think his name is Marshall. Oh, yeah, Fox. Yeah, yep. We should get a Delta Bravo round uh, a carpet for Very like, cool. Oh yeah, Danny yeah. probably had one for the TV on radio thing, right? Yeah, he had yeah. one done. Yep, for sure. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. That was a cool little show they had going there. Well, you could always hit up. Or you could always hit up Adam from Lords of Brooklyn. There's a connection there between Danny Boy and the Lords of Brooklyn with Cage because he has the rug burners and he does all that shit. Nice. Right here in his, <laughs> yeah, it's um yeah. Listen, f- hold on. It's um on Instagram. It's called Rug Burners Official. And they have, I mean, he's, he makes all kinds of shit, all the train numbers all wild style. I mean, he does rugs and it's, it's Adam from Lords of Brooklyn. So there's a little Delta Bravo connection there. Nice. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's a big, we, it's a big web. Yeah. (laughs) It really is. It's all interconnected somehow or another. Awesome. All right, fellas. Well, I'm going to call it a night. Um, it has been awesome talking to both of you. I feel like we're we're even closer than we were before. And then that, and now, like summer's here, about to be here. I'm I, hopefully I'll find myself traveling and um, trying to connect with you guys outside of the uh, podcast 100%. world on the street. On so the out streets, uh, hitting spots. That's right. Fred, we'll be in touch about those new logos. Uh, no pressure, but I'm excited about it. No pressure. I am too. Uh, yeah, keep an eye on your mailbox. Oh, all right. Cool. <laughs> That's great. I'm all sure right. we'll, be, I'll be, I'll, we'll be talking within the next couple of weeks, and then 
like I said, tonight I'm going to book a hotel room and I'll see you in two weeks in the flesh, my man. Yeah, man. June's here. All right. June's here. I'm not going to be freezing. We can walk around and stays lighter out longer. <laughs> I'm all about complaints. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it'll be nice. <laughs> good shit. Gentlemen, thank you so much. All right. Thank, thank you. you guys. Have a good night. Peace. Thank you. Thank you.